Okay, guys, we are live! So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly, um, I guess I'll be your friendly kingmaker today? Kingmaster? I don't know. Um, because today, we are kicking off uh, a, a brand new ongoing campaign on the channel, and that will be playing Paizo Publishing's outstanding Pathfinder 2nd Edition Fantasy RPG. And we are going to be playing through a, a version of their classic and now revised Kingmaker Adventure Path. And with me today are the stars of the Kingmaker campaign. I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing today. Uh, first up, we've got John. Hey everyone, I am John and I'm playing Ramirez Serranus. He is a human bard with the warrior muse and he thinks himself a swashbuckler, but more of a dueling sword user. Very nice. Uh, next up is James. All right, I'm playing Vaz, the uh, orc soldier, who's off uh, at the uh, training up to be a great general at some point in our future. Nice. Uh, next up is Jamie. Hey everybody, I'm Jamie. I'm playing Brommel. He is a lizard folk thaumaturgist, and he is one of the three amigos here who is a sword scion. Nice. Next up is George. Hey, I'm George. Uh, I don't want to shock anybody by this really random choice I made of what to play. Uh, <laughs> but this time I'm going to play a human wizard who is from the Evoker School. <laughs> I also want to draw to the good. I yeah. want to applaud the strategy of naming your character quasi after your son to make me more reluctant <laughs> to kill him. <laughs> so that's what <laughs> I don't know so what well you're talking played. about. <laughs> 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 Next up is Jeffrey. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff, and tonight I'm playing Trog, who is a charhide goblin sorcerer. Nice. And last, but certainly not least, is our resident armor smith, Dave. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Dave. I'm playing Shara, who might quickly be renamed to Anna based on recent rule discoveries. Yeah. Um, yeah. My and, uh, uh, lizard man thaumaturgist, Emmy Lou. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, she is a swashbuckler who thinks herself also a bookkeeper. Very nice. All right. Uh, so uh, for those listening at home, we do apologize for starting a little bit late. We were doing some just a last minute talk about um, what to uh, how we're going to be running things uh, on um, for this adventure. Before we get into it, um, for those who are listening at home, uh, this uh, I guess first off, for those who are regulars to the channel, welcome to our new ongoing campaign. Um, we this is uh, not um, as uh, you know. We're, this is our first uh, step on uh, what's likely to be a very long path. Um, but uh, the last time we started running a mega adventure, uh, it has now run for 169 sessions so far. So I, I look forward to seeing where we go with Kingmaker. I will tell you guys, this is the second time I have started running Kingmaker as well. About uh, eight or nine years ago, I tried running the original one it, for a variety of reasons. It kind of, that one didn't work out, but it had nothing to do with the actual adventure itself. Um, the I have not played the video game, and from what I understand, the video game, uh, the the uh, newest edition of this has tried has both incorporated some good ideas from the video game that they made to the original modules. So there will be some similarities in that, but they're also they have um, made a point of departing from the event from that as well. So if you have played through the video game, you still can expect some surprises in the course of the uh, ongoing uh, campaign. Obviously, if you intend on playing Kingmaker, this will have spoilers in it. <laughs> so there will definitely be things in here and maps and whatnot that are uh, going to be spoilers for the um, the actual adventure itself. If you do intend on playing, just proceed with caution. You may find some spoilers. Uh, we are making use of the wonderful uh, Roll20 module uh, that is uh, they've published for this. Uh, it is not cheap. <laughs> it's a very dear thing. And we found that there was actually problems using the full module and the full contents and making our cameras work properly. So I've had to do some uh, you know jiggery-pokery with the uh, transmogrifier function on this to make this work. But anything, if the maps look great or whatnot, you can you have Roll20 to thank for, for that. They're not sponsoring us or anything like that, but it is the module that we're using. 
Um, and the last thing I will say is just because of past experience with other modules as well, I just want to caution uh, viewers that uh, we are definitely going to be going off script. You will, those who are GMs for this or have played the video game, you will see from the very first scene here, we're already going off script from it. Um, we are use mega adventures like this as frameworks for the actual play at the table. Our perspective is whatever is happening at the table, that is the game. So um, if we differ from how it played out at your table or your video game or how it's written or whatnot, that is just how we intend things to go. Uh, I will also just mention as well, a caution for anyone. Uh, it is a bannable offense on this on the on the live stream or on any of the comments to post any spoilers from this uh, campaign. All the players, uh, even those who have played through the video game bef uh, before, and for any viewers who are wanting to ex pre to experience the campaign as it flows out, I have no remorse bl uh, blocking anybody who tries to ruin the fun for the players or for the uh, viewers. So just proceed forewarned with that. Zero tolerance for people trying to spoil other people's fun. So. Uh, with that scary bits of things, let's talk about Kingmaker. Or even better, let's fucking start playing, guys. So, cool. our scene opens. Oh, you know what? Hold on. We need to do one very important thing that will kick off this campaign in the right way. Do you have getting another book? Uh, I, I'm just pick I don't have to go to pick it up. But Dave, I'm glad that you've got your mic live because Dave... Would you kindly give us a d20 roll, please? Oh, man. <laughs> you all know what this is. <laughs> roll for weather. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to change, change my picture. It looks like Druin in the Oh, <laughs> It is a blustery and very windy uh, night in the capital of Brevoy in rest or not the capital of brevoy in restov uh, one of the larger cities located in brevoy um this is a, a map i found online of uh brevoy and then i just i think this gives a good a good impression of what this is like um before we went live we looked at the maybe let's take a look at the map of uh this just so you guys know as well where we are starting our campaign way down here one of the southernmost if not the southernmost city uh, in all of Brevoy. So you guys are, uh, our scene opens on a very windy night uh, in the spring of the year uh, 4723. We can see that someone is, uh, oh, I'm getting some chipping or clipping from somebody's mic here. Oh, that's me making chainmail, sorry. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> 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 there you go. Um, the, um, uh, the the nights or the uh, the streets themselves are are mostly uh, free. We can hear some noise of uh, people who are inside in different places, uh, families or you know friends or whatnot who are enjoying the uh, the escape from the chill. But there is one man who is walking along uh, with a cloak pulled up all over his shoulders, and his. Uh, Kate pulled in quite tight against the chill. Uh, it seems as if uh, it's not terribly cold here. I don't know what the Fahrenheit would be, but it's about uh, seven degrees um, Celsius, which um, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> cold, uh, it's not uh, below freezing. Uh, so, but the wind, the wind seems to be cutting right through him. And it seems would that the uh, this individual was not uh, on a clear mission to somewhere. Uh, he would be um, uh, likely f trying to find warmer uh, places or a warmer place to, to stay. He makes his way through um, what appears to be kind of an entertainment uh, district. And here we can hear uh, people shouting and drinking. Two men spill out of the bar uh, or one of the bars that he passes. Each of them has a sword at their belt, uh, indicating that they are uh, members. Uh, and the uh, distinctive Aldori uh, was a dueling sword. Uh, at their belt, uh, something indicating, as most students do, even on cold nights, we'll go out and get drunk. Uh, these two being students from the Eldori Swordmaster School. But his destination is a um, uh, a place uh, called the Lazy Log. 
a tavern uh, in this district. That, that tavern uh, seems to be a little less busy uh, than what uh, the others are. Um, and it has a little bit uh, of a different uh, entrance to it. You can see when he, when he walks up to the door, it's almost as if there are two doors set in the wall here. One that's a full-size door that humans or elves or half-orcs may be able to pick up and open. And then there's a smaller door set inside that, almost like a, a little like a portal um, to accommodate the height of smaller patrons like gnomes or halflings or goblins. He uh, opens the door, and we see him come in, and someone shouts from the door, Close the door! As he walks in, and you can see there is uh, a series of fairly small... Most of the patrons in here uh, would stand under three feet tall. Uh, there are gnomes, there are halflings, there are some dwarves in here. There are some humans in here as well, but it's not a very busy bar, certainly not as raucous as what the others. When... Um, he walks in and uh, closes the door behind him. It's almost as if like a wind machine or some kind of winding, you know, causing spell suddenly came to an end. He pulls his cloak back and uh, George, would you tell us what we see when we get our first glimpse of Drawinius? Uh, so <clears throat> he's a, an older gentleman. Um, long white hair, as you can see depicted. I Obviously, most people who are familiar with Pathfinders realize I stole the image of uh, that kind of character, Ezrin, which I've always loved. Um, uh, and he's uh, kind of, he, he stands tall and um, he um, he's holding a staff and, um, and he's got um, some robes on that uh, have uh, what look like maybe constellation patterns or something like that. Um, and he sort of looks around, uh, taking everything in, like his mind is like worrying, like thinking very quickly through uh, all, everything he's taking in. Um, yeah, and uh, he he just sort of looks for, I think he's looking for the person he's supposed to meet here. Is that, yeah. Okay. So I look uh, around for, yeah. Yeah, when you walk in, you're sort of looking around and you hear a, a whistle. Psst and a woman's voice that says, down here, old man. And this is who you see. Now, you recognize this. Ah, this is yeah. uh, Etrix uh, Fogfollow. Uh, Etrix mm -hmm. is someone who works for your contact, for the person who has been arranging things for you. Uh, so I turn to her and say, I, I, uh, yeah, yes, uh, I will uh, uh, join you, and uh, I might. Uh, there might be some Jeff Goldblum coming out here, um, <laughs> uh, and we'll follow her. Okay, she says, "Did you get lost again?" Uh, well, uh, it, um, it depends on your definition of lost. Aha. Uh -huh. She turns around and looks at you, <laughs> and uh, you get the sense that um, whatever you know. Um, uh, whatever degree to which she's willing to accommodate you uh, for your charms, that well is getting pretty empty at this point. I, I've survived. She lasted this long. Yeah. So she's, <laughs> she says, the rest are here. Uh, Lorana excellent. is ready to begin. Very well. Maybe so she on. brings you upstairs. Uh, upstairs, there is a like a second floor to here that is on a balcony that kind of look you know opens up to the down uh, to the main floor, so that all the hubbub from down below seems to kind of carry up here into white noise and get lost in the rafters. Um, back in a corner, uh, there is a, uh, a kind of like a not a curtained off area, but it's got like a bunch of stained glass in it, so it allows some of the light to go through. Some of the noise will spill over from the top. There are tables that are set up against the side of this thing, and there's a door that leads in towards it. So there's a room in there surrounded by stained glass that would afford some privacy, but also for the curious, uh, there may be opportunities to listen in because of the open ceiling and because of the wind, uh, things near there. But what you can see, Drominius, is that there is no one sitting next to this, um, and the door is closed leading in here, though from the moving figures you can see beyond the stained glass uh, panels, it seems as if there are a number of people in. Uh, so she leads you over, 
She opens the door. Once again, there are two doors, a door within the door, but she opens the big one for you. And uh, as Adrowinius steps in, we've heard what he looks like. So what you can see is in here, there is a, a, fine, a kind of larger table, like you picture like a big kind of round table around which people could sit and enjoy a big meal and whatnot. There's a little inset area so servers can kind of get in there and, and put some things down. You'd have to either be an extremely lean human or just a smaller, you know, uh, person to fit through it comfortably. But uh, what you can see is there is a whole bunch of food set up around in here. There does not seem to be enough people to fill this table. Uh, and they seem to be kind of collected in three groupings here. Uh, on one side, you see three individuals who are all wearing... Uh, each of you has the duelists in the group. Do each of you have an Aldori dueling sword? Mm-hmm. Yep. So you see three um, wearing Aldori dueling swords, although they may be, at least two of them, uh, some of the most exotic uh, sword master students that uh, you've seen before or sword school uh, students, they seem to be kind of mm -hmm. talking to one another on one corner. To the right, you can see there is a little goblin. Uh, and Jeff, what do we see Trog doing right now? If he's sitting at uh, the table, is he eating? Uh, I think he's, just, he's um, there's a, you know, a candle or a lantern or something. And he's playing with the flame and the thing, kind of bored, like almost like with a, like you someone would do with a fidget spinner or something. Like he's yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, and this goblin is is working some kind of um, magic. Obviously, that's just like making this thing kind of dance and whatever else. Uh, you can see that there is uh, as well. Um, he has the attention of a male halfling. And you know that this is uh, Quinry Hogbottle. Put this on your phone. Here is what Quinry looks like. Quinry, uh, he is not saying anything, but he looks, from the look on his face, he's a little concerned about the. Uh, free floating flame in the uh, goblin's uh, hand. Um, what do we see the three duelists doing, guys? Are you talking to one another? Are you uh, trying to size up the um, the other folks who have been brought here? I imagine uh, Ramiris or Remy to his friends is uh, still trying to convince him this is the, like the best idea ever, and we're going to make out like bandits. <laughs> <laughs> Who uh, maybe Vaz is the one who's giving a hard look to the pyromaniac uh, goblin? Absolutely, she's an upstanding person. <laughs> and what about Bromel? What does uh, he make of being dragged along for this um, this scheme? I th I think he's noticeably uh, aloof, and and he's like leaning back, uh, almost observing the. Uh, the, the scene here and can't believe he's got himself uh, standing here right now. He's a little bit uh, taken back. Okay. Uh, and then we see that uh, Quinry, that um, uh, halfling, he leans in and says something to a human, uh, a human woman, in fact, uh, who is standing kind of uh, almost like uh, at the side bodyguard style of a third halfling woman. And or third halfling, I should say, not a third halfling woman. Oh, how about I quit hitting the same thing? I'm trying to add a handout and I keep hitting upload. I'm like, why isn't this working? It's like, because you're hitting the wrong button, <laughs> Demi. And the person who's sitting here, uh, who uh, is standing in front of Shara, do I have that right? No. Nope. Yes, I do. Is... Lorana Rumblewood. And you all know Lorana because Lorana is one of the most accomplished and kind of influential criminals in Brevoy. I mean, mm. if you ask any, if you ask Lorana or anyone who knows her, uh, by which I mean knows what she'll do if they don't go along with this line, Lorana is simply a tavern owner. Oh, she runs a 
entertainment troupe and that's it. Shara, what does it look like when, um, what, what, what do people see when they see Shara? Uh, what um, Quinry, or Quiri, uh, Quinry, I put his name down wrong. What Quinry says to you is, are we sure about this? Goblin? He's gonna burn the log down, and this log isn't meant to burn. Oh, you're muted, Dave. I didn't want to hear keep having the clicking going on. Sorry, <laughs> folks. Um, <laughs> making chain mail. Come on. Uh, I think Shara, she's confident that she can, you know, douse whatever flame this little goblin produces, as long as it doesn't get too out of control. Um, and if there's anything really big, there's a bucket just behind the bar. But uh, I think Shara is just kind of casually leaning back looking really nonchalant, but uh, at the same time, eyeing each person up, you know, how they carry themselves, how they shift their weight in their seats and seeing who does, who's what, and who okay. she has to watch out for. So Lorana turns to you uh, to, uh, I think she probably calls you Sherry. Sherry, get everyone to the seats, will you? And she walks directly over to you, Jorvenia says, you make your way in. Uh, as soon as Etrix has let you in, she closes the door and uh, waits outside. I am getting Dave. Are, did you turn off the audio on your? Um, because you're not making chainmail. I'm just getting. Did you turn it off in the roll twenty game? Yeah, it's off in roll twenty. Oh, is your where's your uh, mic? Because when you were adjusting things, that was, there was a popping there as well. Oh, you know, let me just double check roll twenty in my phone. It's no worries. It's not uh, uh, like overwhelming me, but just it's. Uh, I'm hearing it uh, a couple of times, and every time we get into one of these new games, there's always these new issues with audio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Drawinius, uh, you see Lorana, and Lorana is the one who has put together what we discussed before. So she uh, sees you. She <clears throat> walks over and uh, patron. Nice, nice to see you again. It's nice to see you as well. I expect that you'll find... They may not look like much yet, but give them time. Uh, so... Uh, I... Oh, go ahead. I... 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 No, I... I, I, I have a feel, I have a good feeling about it. Good. I do, too. Have a seat. We'll have a chat. We'll sit down. So Thanks. Sherry, when uh, or Shara, when um, Lorana asked you to go and um, seat everyone, what did you do? I think she just takes her cane, and she's probably stand she's standing in the back behind the tables, like where people are sitting in front of her. Uh, I think everyone's you got on one side of the table. You can picture it's like you know. Um, uh, it's early at like, imagine like a, a employee dinner where you got a too big of a venue than what you, you know, have for the people who work there. So you got three people clustered on one side of the table who aren't sitting yet. You got the goblin sitting at the table with his chair pulled back, tossing fireballs up and catching them. Uh, you got this old man who just arrived uh, and you've got yourself who you were keeping an eye out for Lorana. I think, um, I think it's a polite but somewhat intimidating time to sit down okay so you walk over to the um you and i think those of you who attend the swords master school i i imagine that you're you can't help but try and size up a, a person who's wearing uh a rapier like a, a dueling sword and wearing a dueling cape at that uh you don't recognize her and she doesn't wear an aldori uh, uh dueling sword so clearly not a member of the school but she walks up to you and simply says what was that, Dave? Time to sit. What do you guys do? Well, Remy kind of breaks off what he was saying and then looks at her, does a quick up and down, and then looks to his other two members and shrugs and goes to take a seat. Faz and Bromel? Yeah, uh, similar. I'm, I'm imagining that uh, maybe they 
ran short of seats, and so Bromel just kind of leans back on his tail, sitting almost like in a sitting well, again, position. This table is far too big to fit everyone on there. You can certainly push the yeah. chart, the table, the um, chair to the side, and sit yourself down like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Trog, you just have to pull your chair up, so you have to like hop down, drag it in, then hop back up yeah. again. And I think because it's a sure. uh, it's accommodated towards uh, small people, like each one of these chairs has kind of like a little like fold out step, so you can easily get up and down onto it. Perfect. And Drawinius, what about yourself? Um, <clears throat> is there a, a gap where like there's several seats that are empty? Most in definitely. A row? Okay, great. So I'm gonna go and literally pick the exact one. Like I'm by math, I'm gonna count yeah. and pick the one that's directly in the middle. And okay. it'll take me a second to do it. And you see my eyes looking, and then I go straight to that one and I sit. Okay. So she, um, with uh, with that, uh, Lorana um, walks over. She says something to uh, Quinry, who then leaves uh, and leaves you with this elderly um, halfling woman. Uh, in spite of her silver hair and, and uh, her wrinkled uh, face, she still moves like, you know, um, you're not sure that any one of you, uh, Remy, Vaz, or Bromel, would want to face her in a duel. She still definitely moves like a predator, uh, a live, small predator. And what uh, her, um, her physique or her uh, posture communicates more subtly, her commanding presence definitely captures it more aggressively. And she turns and says, then, you've each come and I've offered you through four things. Those four things are a lesson in history, a lesson in current events, a story, and most importantly, an opportunity. The story first. Some of you are from our fair land, some of you from elsewhere. I will assume that none of you have a clear understanding of the history of our fine nation. And she, there's contempt that drips off of that. Dave, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but I am still getting some noise from you. If, could you position your mic elsewhere? Uh, is there somewhere to like, maybe put it up on a box or something like that so it's away from where the chain mail is being shifted? Because I think it's just um, because it's so close to it, that's where it's picking up that noise. It's actually farther than it normally is. So I don't, I don't know, know why. Going. It's the, maybe it's the gain on your your thing. I don't know what's going on, but I'm I'm hearing every like shifting of your uh, of the chain mail. Um, oh, uh, no, please like, carry on um, uh, working with it, and, and uh, you don't need to mute. But if you put it, even like maybe put it on a on a like a napkin or something like that, or a towel. Yeah. All right. Wow. We'll see. So, what you may not be aware of. Brevoy is a singular nation. That's only been the past two centuries. Brevoy is two nations. Isia and Rossland. And Isia and Rossland were not friends. It's said that neighbors uh, make poor friends, and that could not be more true of Isia and Rossland for centuries thousands of years even, strife and war between our two nations. Even when Grand I um, Iobaria raised in the east, still, Issy and Rossland could see no agreement. That was until the coming of Choral the Conqueror and his dragons. It is still an open debate among scholars as to where Choral came from or how his allegiance to the dragons came about. What is certain is the first to surrender was Isia. 
And the second, only after being driven to the ground, swords masters and sword lords killed, burned in the dragon's fire, did Rosalyn finally bend the knee. Isia, a coward, some would say, made a rele- uh, an early allegiance. House Sertova, in particular, made easy alliances and married into the dynasty that Choral would found. And these two unhappy neighbors were made into one under the power of the dragons. Now know what happened to Choral. Once his dynasty was founded, he and his dragons disappeared. And then, this is old news for you now, but then after 200 years to the day that Choral conquered these lands, every member of his dynasty, from the babe in the crib to the old man at the edge of his grave, all vanished. Since the House of the Dragons has disappeared, Sotova, through their claim through early marriage into Choral's line, have purported to be control. And while we would not find many things to agree with House Orlovsky, we will agree with one thing. The the one who fancies himself the king in New Stetvan, sitting on the ruby throne, we prefer to think the way House Orlovsky does, that they are but regents and not true kings. With a threat of the dragons and their fire gone, the glue that held these two together, the force that ensured a, a, an alliance between these two unhappy neighbors is gone. And those who were forced to bend the knee to the dragons cannot help but think that the dragons are gone now. And so, without that threat, why should they bend the knee to what is effectively a false king of Isia? Or, so current events have been. The other part of history. You've heard of the Valley of Fire, have you? The Sword Masters... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> the sword masters at your academy Remy Vaz and Bromel or Remirius you would call you by your full name Remirius Vaz and Bromel do you a fa- disservice in the ways of history because the valley of fire is where the greatest sword lords of legend burned to Choral's dragons It's said that the very ground itself was an inferno by the end, and none survived. Legacy of warriors, legacy weapons, all reduced to smoking char in the dragon's fire. I would have thought that every one who would claim themselves a Bravosi sword lord would know of that trail that tale of tragedy. Restov, you may know, has our Lord Mayor, but those who run Restov truly are the Sword Lords. And that brings us to the end of our history lesson and on to news and current events. It has been 24 years since all of House Rogarvia vanished. 24 years for the weakness 
of those who rule from New Stetfen, who do not belong on the ruby throne. For the sword lords to truly question the value of paying taxes and following the dictates of an Asian king. The sword lords run Restoff, and it seems that they are growing restless. There has been open contempt spread by members, uh, ma many of the sword lords, towards the king and towards the royal apparatus. There has been, while not revolution, there has been acts of contempt and I think perhaps disobedience is how those in New Stetvin may, may phrase such things. But now it appears that the Sword Lords have two goals or expected outcomes. One is that the regent in New Stetvin will not stand for such temerity for long. As such, we have heard that a local fort, one known as Fort Serenko, six days journey from here, they have been moved and they are not alone. Troops have been moved back to Restov to ready themselves for this. For there is no invasion coming from cursed Iobaria. There is no horde coming from the south. What do you imagine that the armies are being brought back to Restov for? The second development while not announced yet, Restoff, with apparently the blessing of the regent, has ambitions to expand its territory. And while in name it may be called something connected to Brevoy, I believe they have ambitions to extend Rossland and restore the kingdom that was conquered. The sword lord behind this is one known to me. Her name is in my notes. <laughs> I, 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 have to, I have to often keep notes with me. I, I, I understand. <laughs> Her name, Sword Lord uh, Jamandi Aldori, adopting the surname as the Sword Lords do, a half elf, capable warrior in her day, and from what I understand, still. And what I hear is that she will be giving a call out for heroes, parties of adventurers, those who would go and tame some of the lands to the south. But before we discuss that opportunity, let me first tell you a story. This is the story of Roderick Nesky. Roderick Nesky was a sword lord of Rostov, and a proud one. And, like many sword lords, he carried with him a dynastic weapon of great treasure, of great value, and said to be enchanted as well, augmenting his already impressive and legendary prowess as a swordsman. He had a son, and the son was born on the day that Choral came to Rostlin. And, not wanting to part with the tradition of their kind, 
he left his family sword so that the first thing his son could grip would be the weapon that would be passed down to him as his firstborn heir. Nesky burned like so much wood with hundreds of other sword lords in the Valley of Fire. And over time, with the conquering of Rossland and the falling out of favor of sword lords, families of those uh, who opposed Choral were not likely to gain his sympathy or forgiveness. And so it said, the sword and the boy fled. The sword is of note, of course, because it was said to itself crackle with a cold lightning, freezing and crackling and dancing when it was drawn. An unmistakable weapon with a blue gem set into the hilt that seemed to itself shelter a storm. That sword, that woman, and the as and yet unnamed uh, heir all disappeared, fleeing from Choral's wrath. I tell you now of a story brought to me by a soldier who fled from or who had retreated from that fort and he told us of a contact he had among the bandits of that region. He, as is customary in his case, had not a proper name but he was known as the Hungering Sword. The sword so named because of the distinctive features of this bandit's weapon. A sword that crackled with cold lightning and set with a stone in it that appeared to shelter a storm within. Now, while this guard had a good relationship with this and a way of communicating with this bandit, feeding his soldiers information, he was not able to speak to him before retreating. What I tell you now is the opportunity. When it becomes widely known that Jamandi Aldori is looking for adventurers to take part in this, there will be many who will come and answer that call. There will be fierce competition between those seeking charters to settle those lands. This is an opportunity unlike any offered to any across the inner sea in recent history. No noble has openly said, go and conquer. And that is what she will be offering. To be considered for such a thing, we must distinguish ourselves from others. And I can think of no better way to impress a sword lord than to deliver to them a long lost relic of one of their kind, a hero who fell at the Valley of Fire, something around which those who are interested in such things could rally, a symbol of fallen Rossland. The opportunity I present my sources tell me in a month's time is when Jamandi Aldori will announce her call. We have a month 
to make an impression on her. I have brought you together because I feel you are... You have the makings of such a parting. Something that could distinguish itself from the others and be among those first selected for this unique opportunity. To do so, you need find this hungry sword and obtain the sword. She gestures over at Trog. One among your number knows those lands well and the reprobates who inhabit them. Trog, in fact, you actually know what the Hungering Sword looks like. He's actually a half-orc. Mm, okay. The rest, Shara, I trust will keep Drawinius the Good safe on these on what could be a more arduous journey than he is accustomed. And Ramirius Vaz and Bramel, I hear that you are not satisfied to only be masters of your sword craft. You would also find yourselves masters of your world. We have one month. One month to find him, to recover the sword, and deliver it to the sword lords, so that when the draws are pulled, your names will be on there. I promised you four things. The history lesson, a lesson in current events, a story, and an opportunity. And do you accept my gifts? Yeah, yes, of course. Then he uh, takes a conspiratorial glance at Baz and Bromel, w- like, wiggles his eyebrows up and down, like, come on, guys. <laughs> Seems it would be an honor to venture to the Valley of Fire. If you venture to the Volley of Fire, Bromel, you will find very little to recover from there. The sword, unless you intend on delivering Nesky's bones to the Sword Lord, that is all you will find there. To the south and east, there is uh, the fort that my soldier was stationed at Fort Serenko. It is located six days travel from here. If you travel to the west, you will pass through first Nevacta's Crossing and then a region known as the Fang Dragon. Wait, no, that's not right. Sorry, wrong two pages. The Crooked Falls. <laughs> Pass through those, then across the Shrike River and to the fort. The Hungry Sword contacted my soldier through a hollow in a tree near the fort. Whatever communications may come from him will be found there. I trust that you will be able to suss out who where among these bandits that you where you can find this hungry sword she leans forward and puts her knuckles on the table and she's standing on a little platform too like just like the uh the thing leading up she is only three feet tall (laughs) so she's just very just a very um charismatic and present uh old lady she leans in I don't care how you obtain the sword. This does not matter to me, nor, I suspect, and more importantly, will it matter to the sword lords. 
Then. And she looks over at you, uh, Drawinius, as if, like, to say anything further. She shouldn't say it, but knowing that you are the one who sort of uh, helped put all of us together, she looks to you to see if there's anything you wish to add. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, the history lesson and uh, all of the information. I, I wish only to say that um, uh, I am very thankful that you have all uh, agreed to um, uh, join this uh, uh, expedition. Um, I will do my best, but uh, I will warn you, I have um, not spent much time in the outdoors, shall we say. Um, but what I do know is this from my studies, there's something important to this, something something that may affect this entire world. I, I am not sure of the, of the details, but I have seen in signs importance. Um, and I have my own personal reasons, which perhaps at some some point I will I will share as we become closer. Uh, 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 but um, there is a pattern here. We just we must find it, whatever that pattern is. It's hidden in chaos, but there is an order to chaos. So I just thank you for for being willing to go on this venture. Uh, Lorana lets the once you finish talking, lets the silence sit for enough time to be like. Yeah, and, and he doesn't even the know. The sword. Like, he's to, like, <laughs> you know, he, Bring he even know the he's sword. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, uh, yes. That is part of the pattern. See, that is that is what I meant. Uh, she looks over at Cheryl like, uh, <laughs> see, like your your work's going to be cut out for you. <laughs> yeah, you get the impression that he's sort of like an absent-minded professor, yeah. literally. She then gestures at the food that's set out on the table, and she says, "Then." We have one month. If you do not return in a month's time with the sword, do not come back here. You'll be welcome elsewhere in Restov, I'm certain. You will not be welcome back in my establishment. She gestures at the food. The food is growing cold, though. I would encourage you to enjoy it. And she steps down. It is the last free meal you will receive. And walks over to the door, pulls it open, closes behind, leaving the six of you on your own. So, you all are looking at one another. Go ahead. What do you, who's the first uh, one to speak? Uh, uh, so, uh, 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 I just want, uh, whoever is the leader, uh, uh, I will be happy to um, do what, what you ask of me. Sure, just leans in and grabs, grab the goblet of wine and just takes a sip. Cool. <laughs> he just stares awkwardly at everybody. Uh, is, well, there, uh, is there some protocol are... we need to? Yes. Oh, excuse me, Sheriff. No. Sorry. I was just going to say it. It's clearly that most of you are still accustomed to taking instructions. So I might suggest you eat and drink and uh, get acquainted with each other. Well, the, the three of us are quite acquainted with each other. And he reaches forward to grab a drink and leans back and puts his feet on the table. Um, so who's the leader? Uh, is that anybody else coming? <laughs> I, I, I that would probably be me. Brommel is uh, is you know reaching for the nearest uh, dish and uh, feed, eating like he's not had a meal in a while, uh, <laughs> even though I'm sure he has. Do we need a leader per se, or we just have people function in roles, perhaps under the guidance of one who knows better? Mm. And do you know better? Interesting. Depends on the situation. Personally, I have no experience out in the wilds for, or that area, so who knows the way around the backwoods? I know my way, but do you all want me as the leader? I've never been the leader. I think we will earn our place as leader as time goes on. Very wise, all of you. Very wise. Actions, yes, not talk. I see. 
Oh, yes, that's another. I'm going to write that down, actually. <laughs> oh, actually, talking is an action. Genius. <laughs> that's all I have to say. So, Trog, if you can help guide us, be our pathfinder through the, this journey, you can lead that portion of the of the travel. Leading us down the path. You know what, guys? I believe if you um, why don't we get some, why don't we get some dice rolling here? Uh, well, I guess first off, <laughs> everyone go ahead and take a hero point, and mm. uh, then everyone awesome. click on uh, their what do you call it? Click on. I'm going to roll initiative. Now suddenly you're attacked. Fang dragon, look out! <laughs> I told you we're making changes to this game. Uh, what, <laughs> everywhere, uh, <laughs> everywhere it's dangerous. Yeah. Every mug is a mimic. <laughs> Um, why, why don't you, uh, you each roll uh, perception, the skill, not initiative. Okay. Let's see how everyone does here. Not the greatest. I'm Rem clueless, as we know. Remy is not a wisdom-based character. Okay, sure. <laughs> hey, oh, it's a nice. craftsman who blames his nice, uh, tool. A poor craftsman who blames nice. his tools. There's 20s oh, no, on no, this no. dice. You just need to ale that I'm drinking. <laughs> uh, so Trog Shara, I think it's Shara is, is the one who notices actually first that uh, there is a, a rolled out map uh, that's in here, like amongst the food. So allow me to. Oh, Trog, you get a hero point too. Oh, nice. She'll, she'll take her cane and uh, and just tap the map and maybe slide a piece of the plate over and gobble it over and go tap, tap, tap. Sure. Look at this. So look at this, guys. This is something that will become very familiar to you. This Hexagons. is our hex map. Uh, you're having bury yes. me flashbacks, Dave? <laughs> 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 totally. <laughs> Let me bring some stuff up from my GM's layer here so you guys can... Uh, yeah. Every time I say lair, I think it means lair. My GM's lair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll release it from there. Hold We're on. thinking the same thing, so don't you worry. <laughs> That's right. Good. <laughs> so there is, uh, that is Bravoy, and this here, boom, BV1, that is Restov. Each of the, you basically, guys, at your speed, you will be able to travel without fatiguing yourself one hex per day. That will also give you an opportunity okay. to kind of, you know, to search and get a sense of what is in that hex. You can choose to push yourself. Are you not seeing any labels? In the top I'm right. The far right, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the top, very top right. Oh. Uh, my, my chat was in okay. the way. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I've got your images in the way. I'll put them in the bottom. <laughs> Get off of them. <laughs> uh, there we go. I see it. Uh, this is the, uh, what did I say, the Shrike uh, River? Yes. Here. Yeah. Uh, down the, oh, what layer am I on? Jim's lair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> BV2 is Navakta's Crossing. R okay. L four are those now I sound like a bingo player or a bingo announcer. Um, <laughs> is the Crooked Falls that were mentioned? Trog, you would describe these as a series of cataphracts coming down where those two rivers meet up with one another. And then lastly, R L five is the fort, uh, Fort Serenko. Mm-hmm. And ever since the first time that I've run this uh, campaign, I continually put in Jim Steranko's name when I read that. <laughs> Fort Steranko. It's part of a flying helicarrier. And it has a bunch of crazy Art Deco designs on it. Now, it is a... Um, that is where the, the fort is. Now, uh, anybody can go ahead and give us a society role. Let's see what you know about local events. Not Remy. <laughs> uh, Shara. Tra trained in it. Shara, Nat 20 man. from Vaz. Oh, Nat 20. Yeah. So you guys have, have heard both Vaz and Shara uh, and um, and Bromel and uh, Drawinius. You've heard about this. Like there have been relocations of troops that have been brought back from Fort Serenko into the, the region of uh, Brevoy. 
You really only do that unless you're giving up on an area, uh, which doesn't seem to be the case here, or if you're expecting to need those troops elsewhere. So Vaz, that may be of interest, uh, because you're nat 20, I think you probably have actually spoken to, uh, it was you got the nat 20, right? Yeah. I think just well, giving you- Well, movements of troops, this would be her thing. That's She'd exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, so you may have been talking to people and like, she's not wrong. Like there's like two other um, kind of det detachments of uh, forts that have been abandoned and troops have been moved in or near Brevoy. And again, like there's no, to the best of your knowledge, there's no other threats that are going on. So to do that, seems to be anticipating trouble from some from something or you know why, why else would you want to keep your troops close now i should be uh, i'm thinking because it's a nat 20 she'd be interested in, as you say if, if you're leaving a fort that's you know once you lose something it's hard to get it back so would you have found out how many troops were still at the fort no be curious no 100 percent abandoned Wow. Every troop has been moved back. That's the same for two other forts as well. Oof. Not even a skeleton garrison. It was the thing. It was w one of the reasons why skeleton this uh, soldier um, was, I mean, I, I think that uh, Lorana definitely has a knack for finding information uh, as is, well, you know, when necessary. And um, this guy may have been grossing. Uh, Shara, you would kind of understand how... Uh, both Lorana and Quinry and Etrix uh, kind of work. They are the, yeah, Etrix and uh, Quinry are sort of the two like main lackeys, if you will, of uh, Lorana. You've gotten to know them since coming down here, since you fled uh, Fort Ice, <laughs> however many months ago. Uh, is that an Issian accent? What the fuck? Um, what um, you uh, would know is that uh, this, this, guy i guess was trying to work out some kind of deal with his band and wasn't even to get word to this guy before he, you know when he was forced to leave the orders came in pretty quickly for them to pick up and go so the bandit may not even know why they've gone and whatever message has been left in that in that hollow it may actually be directions to find this this bandit i think she would uh reiterate that somewhat that the the message may still be there. It might not be as difficult as it might seem. Getting there, should you be hardy enough, mm -hmm. might be half the battle. So the the travel just to and from uh, Fort Serenko would be 10 days. Uh, that's assuming no issues, no complications, no weather delays or anything like that. Uh, if you... Uh, uh, Lorana was not uh, kidding. Um, Drawinius, why I encourage you to keep your money rather than going down to zeros because what you've got on you is what you guys have right now. Ooh, okay. So uh, there will be no additional funds provided. Um, this is in part uh, maybe a test of some kind to see how you guys work together and how you're able to do this with mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the means that you have. Well, seems we've got a decent journey ahead of us. What if we can get some of this food to go? <laughs> Good idea. You see Trog's like shoveling a bunch of food into a bag because he doesn't have any gold. So. <laughs> Remy wings at Trog and st stuffs like a muffin in his shirt. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, do you want to talk particulars? Sure. Then, what are you guys planning on doing? I think we'll need to stock up a little what? bit of food. Some of when, you when have. What, oh, go ahead, George. I'm just wondering what exa what exactly uh, the time was for us. Uh, right now, it is it is evening, and I, I need to look up. Sorry, for, uh, okay. I, I was going to grab. A, I'm going to keep a calendar uh, for you guys in this. We have a month to find this guy. Uh, so it'll be a month before we yeah. are in effectively the like the Golarian equivalent of March. So you can expect that there still okay. could be snow. There still could be, uh, we are pretty far north and uh, to the north of us, there is a giant glacier uh, about uh, 200, 300 miles to the north. So 
Kev, do you just set everything in Canadian prairie climates? Yeah, pretty much. I wasn't going to say it. (laughs) Dave did earlier. (laughs) Sounds like we're frost maidening all over again. That's not that bad. So we are making use uh, of the rules for uh, Hexploration uh, that are in the Game Mastery Guide. We are also making use of the cooking and the camping rules out of the Companion for uh, this here. Let's see. Let's see. Where is it? Where's my Companion? Here. Pachum. Uh, we're also making use of the weather rules out of there, uh, complete with the awesome uh, thing, the awesome um, hazards that come from the weather. So if anyone, uh, when they, when you guys do reach level two, assuming that that will be the case, <laughs> uh, I will point out that there is a new feat in, uh, in the companion on page 121 that is predict weather that allows you to have some ability to plan. The camping rules out of this look pretty fun. Um, and if they turn to be, like, we'll, we'll give them a try. And then if they if it proves to be uh, tiresome, we won't do it. But they do look like an awful lot of fun. And the cooking rules also seem like a lot of fun, too. It would have been fun for Dorman, I think, uh, <laughs> about three oh, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, to give you an understanding of how the mechanics will, will work for things like random encounters. Random encounters are dictated as they are, are run in Kingmaker the way they are in the Game Master Guide. So uh, every four hours, I roll for random encounters. However, that doesn't mean you have a violent encounter with a beastie every you know 12 or higher that I roll on a dice every four hours. There are uh, three varieties of random encounters that you can run into, which are um, harmless, hazard, and creatures. Um, the creatures is the least likely to run across the, uh, hazards are the second most likely to run across. And then more, more things you're going to find are going to be, um, harmless. So there will be some interesting stuff that will happen. You may have some opportunities to meet characters or whatever else, or, you know, um, this is the proverbial, you know, how did I run into this traveling traveler, you know, in a computer RPG? Like a traveling merchant, like, oh, and he's got a whatever for sale. That, that can happen in this. I'm, I'm going to try out a variety of different um, uh, non-combat uh, random encounters uh, from different uh, sources. So we'll keep it kind of fresh. There'll always be some fun uh, non-violent things, as well as just atmospheric stuff. Um, you will, uh, it's assumed you're going to be spending between uh, 8 and 12 hours sleeping each day, and it's assumed you're only traveling for 8 you can push yourself on for another day, and you can do that a number of times. Does anyone have a constitution modifier of zero? Or does everyone have at least a plus one? Oh, I've got a plus one. Okay. Um, a two. Hmm. So does anyone have zero? No? Good. That means you can try and force march <laughs> then. Uh, if you have a zero, uh, what happens? You become fatigued. If uh, uh, if good. you, what was that, Dave? Oh no, that was me. I just said fatigue's not good. No, oh, fatigue's definitely not good, and you don't get it back <laughs> until you get a full day's rest. Most of us, having played in your campaigns in the past, Kev, would attest that Constitution is is at least a secondary uh, attribute. Maybe even primary. One Maybe of my primary. favorite things about CNC Oops. is that yeah. all the fear and mind control shit is generally a charisma save. <laughs> it's yeah. fantastic. I'm glad. Yeah, unfortunately, I uh, I went charisma rather than con, so I'm going to be. Yeah. 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 I have a suspicion Vaz and me have very similar stat layouts. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what it means is that. Uh, so a force march allows you to, to basically to travel for an extra hex at your speed, guys. And uh, bah, 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 bah. that is the only activity you can perform that day. You can't do anything else. Uh, and you can participate in a force march safely for a number of days equal to your constitution modifier, a minimum of one day. Uh, after that, uh, you become fatigued. So... 
16 here. Okay, so what is the most, let's just maybe get this out of, out of uh, taken care of right now. What is the lowest constitution modifier we have? You guys can put oh. that in chat. And that was a, that was a charisma. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I asked about charisma, but I, I have a three con. Okay. Wow. All right, so Brumell, so there we go. We got our answer. That means you guys can go one extra day uh, one day of force marching without penalty. If you do a second day, you become fatigued. While you guys are traveling, there are two, so there are different kinds of activities. I'm looking at page 172 of the uh, game mastery guide, just so we all understand what uh, the exploration rules are like, which is justifying a purchase for George here. Uh, yeah, I thought, <laughs> I figured as much. Uh, yeah. There are group activities that you can take um, the number of activities you can take per day uh, are dictated by how fast you can travel. The, uh, at your speed, you can take one activity per day. If you want to go through a hex, you need to spend that with a group activity of traveling. You can spend, let's see here, um, that allows you to move to an adjacent hex. When you get into more gnarly terrain like uh, forests or mountains uh, or such, it will slow down. You'll need to spend more activities as you guys gain access to things that might make you faster, like horses or ponies or war dogs or whatever. Uh, or war bison. Oh my gosh, you guys need war bison. Um, the, Are uh, you offering? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, to say, at the moment, I'm looking at that map, I'm looking more prosaically at a boat. <laughs> yeah, a boat might not be a bad yeah. thing too, although <laughs> yeah, you yeah, do need to explore flashbacks. Yeah, you will need. Yeah, <laughs> wherever your uh, uh, dormant uh, dis like uh, bulk buy of his dog pets because they kept dying. Um, Boats have historically not gone well for us. <laughs> giant, very <laughs> true. Uh, but so as well as, but as well as hirelings. Yeah, I think we've got a hurricane more times going by river <laughs> than by land. That's true. Uh, so what you can also do is there is a group activity called Reconnoiter. Reconnoiter, it costs a number of activities equal to what it costs to travel the hex minus one. So through a clear hex, you can both travel and reconnoiter the hex at the same time. Uh, this is surveying, exploring a specific area, getting the lay of the land, blah, blah, blah. It... Um, once it's been reconnoitered, you can map the area to reduce your chances of getting lost in it. So that is uh, is helpful. Group activities require the entire party to work together in order to be effective. So traveling and reconnoitering, everyone needs to be doing that stuff. If, the, For instance, they say if the group has two exploration activities per day and decides to travel and reconnoiter, no one would have any additional exploration activities that day. Uh, in addition, I think, let's see here. Yeah, you can split up for those of you who are faster. I heard someone's got a 30 movement. That'll give you an extra, um, uh, extra activity, but you will not be with the party when a random encounter happens. Mm. So that can mean... The party faces them without your assistance, or it means you face an encounter balanced for an entire party. There are also, they and they strongly encourage you to keep this in the case, this is a very much sand, like old school sandbox in the sense that there are places where you will go and all the monsters will have their names in red. By which I mean, for those who aren't Warcraft nerds, they're going to fucking kill you. They're more powerful than what you are. <laughs> If you see level uh -huh. XXX above their heads, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, so just be warned that you are absolutely free to go to places, but what is what is expected of the campaign is that if you do run into something that is more powerful than you, you'll get the fuck out of there and then plan to come back at another time and hope that they haven't prepared for you know your eventual arrival. Uh, it okay. is a very much, uh, it, it's encouraged that we run the game in that kind of classic um, exploration kind of way. It's a sandbox crawl. Um, other activities, the uh, individual activities, in addition to fun stuff that you can, um, you know, you can come up with yourself. There is a fortifying camp, which is expanded in the uh, camping rules. And there is map the area. As long as your uh, group has successfully reconnoitered the hex, you can use this activity to create an accurate map of the hex, 
with a successful survival check. Uh, when you have an accurate map of the hex, the DC of any check to navigate the hex is reduced by two. If you're not following a road, you can get lost in place or a river or some other obvious you know, landmark. You can get yourself lost in terrain and the difficulty is set by the different zones. Um, it's just like uh, everything else in Pathfinder 2, the mm -hmm. different zones are kind of level based. So some places you'll more easily get lost. So if you were say to pay attention to the game and decide to make decisions based on that, let's say meta level, um, then you may, um, want to, to figure out that, boy, this is a really fucking hard place for me to navigate. Maybe I shouldn't run into something that wants to kill me here. That's a good yeah. way of learning that. Uh, that's it. Otherwise, the game goes where you guys choose to go. Uh, we uh, From what uh, Lenara ha or Lorana has told you, it sounds like there's going to be some kind of call for heroes in about a month's time. But you have a month to try and put your name to the top of the list of the heroes who will be addressed in that Gotta call. Gotta get ourselves uh, worked up into hero shape. Okay, start the training montage, put on the Paul Stanley mm -hmm. song. <laughs> Let's get this thing going. <laughs> so any questions about exploration, guys? No. Okay. I don't think so. So I don't think so. I, I just was reading one other section uh, beyond that. The two or the three you covered. Um, after mapping, it mentions subsist that you can use subsist after um, you have done eight hours of traveling. Um, is that part of this? That's it is and, and like the, all the things you can do with the the skill mechanic. The exploration thing yeah. is is integrated with the skill mechanic. So like okay. crafting and whatnot. And next month we're gonna have brand new crafting rules with uh, Treasure Vault, uh, or whatever yeah. that thing is called. I think it's called Treasure yeah. Vault. Yeah, Treasure Vault. Yeah, yeah, Treasure Vault will be out next month, so like by the third session of this, we're gonna have access to a whole bunch of new uh, uh, crafting rules. That's so, awesome. Yeah, cool. pretty exciting. Thank you. Um, so, uh, any other uh, questions? Are you guys ready to start your planning? We should start saving our iron ingots and our our saber cat skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys will be fighting over iron nodes. Tink. Tink. <laughs> Make sure you get that flying mount as soon as you can. Um, what, uh, I, I say that's the last wow joke I'm likely to make in the game, but like we all know that's a lie. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, what, um, so what are you guys thinking? You're sitting around here. Are there any other things you need to work out? Like, for instance, um, I imagine the call for heroes is going to go to an adventuring party with a name. So you have a month to come up with a name for your group as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I need another two weeks of supplies. So. Okay. All uh, right, that's mm. the end of our group. Brevoy <laughs> itself <laughs> is. Need um, more supplies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Quake in your shoes, evildoers, because <laughs> looking for supplies is here. <laughs> Just like call ourselves the Sword Lords, but I think that's taken by a powerful group. I heard something about that. <laughs> well, you'd also have to get me a sword. <laughs> you could call yourself the Lord Swords. Did you say Sword Lords? Lord Swords? No, no, I said uh, no, no. Lord Swords. It's, uh, no copyright infringement. I don't know what you're talking all. about. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the off-brand version of the heroes that you find in like a dollar store. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I feel like our uh, our name may emerge uh, as yeah. events progress. The alternate yeah. version of that is that you're what uh, your grandmother buys you when you put something on your list for Christmas. I'm, is that awesome. a thing? I've never heard that before. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> So then, um, <laughs> if you wish to pick up anything else from uh, Brevoy, you can get it at the, the prices that uh, you find in the core rulebook. Mm -hmm. uh, I offer up, I'll just offer up to the party that I do have some, uh, some coin if, uh, if anybody thinks we need anything. Are we treating, I think uh, we need some rations. Are we treating yeah, rations like iron rations? I've got three weeks rations now. Uh, I still purchased some of them as well. Yeah. Anybody capable of bringing down an animal for food? Let's take a I've look a... at the old survival oh. rules. I'm not trained with uh, surviving in the wild, so. 
Okay. I've survived in the wild. <laughs> Jeff has played <laughs> in one of my campaigns before. <laughs> uh, so survival, survival, survival. Um, Forest. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cover. Tr oh, cover tracks. Uh, tracks sense direction. Hmm. There is not. Hold on here. So I think there is something where you can try and live off the land as well. I just don't remember where that is. Let's see. And the question comes also while you're looking on that of a tent. So I can get a pop tent, but don't have the money for a four-person tent, that's for sure. Yeah, and one of the things, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to look at this pretty picture here, but maybe it's more helpful for you guys to look at the exploration map here. Got about two gold I could put towards tent, um, but that that'll tap me out. Or we each just bring our own tent, the pop tent. That's five silver, is it? Eight silver. Yeah, because it'll be stay warm. You'll be it's easy to stay warm in bigger tent. Uh, you'll be sleeping rough uh, at least one night uh, before you get to uh, Nevatka's Crossing. And uh, then you'll be sleeping rough pretty much until you reach that fort. So uh, I, I I have the uh, the uh, the means to uh, uh, purchase uh, such an item. Would need two, however. Two? What is the total on the on the two? Ten. Ten ten gold pieces. Yep. Well, I actually Tricky, eh? I. I could, I could, I could afford it. I'd have a few silver left. Happy to contribute to to the to the group and uh, uh, ensure that we uh, do not um, freeze or encounter other uh, hazards. So I, I will offer up. So I'll basically spend ten ten gold pieces, which is the rest that of what I have, uh, to buy two tents. Um, uh, I am. I'm not. I do, and I'm like holding them like I don't think I can uh, car carry these. Does anyone? <laughs> I can. To? I can carry one of them. I can, uh, I can carry one. Yeah. All right, so I give you each the one of the two. Yeah, I've got a spare bulk too if I without being encumbered. So. Damn. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much all I have. Oh, you know what though. Here. Subsist uh, is mm -hmm. untrained. Uh, you use either society if you're in a settlement or survival in the wild. On a success, you find food and shelter with basic protection from the elements to provide you uh, subsistence, subsistence living. On a failure, you're exposed to the elements and don't get enough food, becoming fatigued until you attain sufficient food and shelter. So... And on a critical, you either provide a subsistence living for yourself and one additional creature, or you improve your own food and shelter, giving yourself a comfortable living. I'm in a situation where we need to do that. Just as an option for those who uh, uh, have mm -hmm. survival, the difficulty for that will also be key to whatever you're traveling through. The game sort of gives different, or the adventure, I should say, gives different uh, difficulties to each uh, thing, so... So that is what subsists. You met, since you brought it up, George, I thought I'd look up the actual rules yeah, for it. No, that's that's great. No, I I, I think it may <laughs> at some point come to it. <laughs> Just given a little your survival. Experience. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to really helping on that. So front. anything else, you guys? I, I believe everyone who has an adventurer's pack has five torches mm -hmm. uh, right now. So those of you who do not remember that uh, a dark version is uh, in short supply in PF2, and I think that only Vaz has it. Yeah, so, they do have five torches, and they also do come with two weeks of rations for anybody who, because uh, I didn't realize that at first. It comes with a week of rations. Mm -hmm. I've got a little yes. extra coin. So I bought two more. Okay. And I also have a, and I have a light spell, just FYI. Cantrip. Be handy. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody need help acquiring food? Nope. Uh, uh, not, a, not, a, not at the moment. They seem to have enough. I think enough to get there and back. Trug, I hope. Do you need more than you can carry here? We can we can get you something before the road. I wouldn't complain if we had extra food. Okay. 
Uh, Cher will buy you a week of rations. Thank you. <laughs> By body weight, Trog is about 70% head and then 30% <laughs> stomach. <laughs> Rommel, Remy, Baz. Baz, you said you had food already. Everybody have yep, water got skins? Food. Got water, water skins. skins. Okay. Got that adventurer pack. Yeah. Then, let's talk about... Um, the exploration mode, because this is what you will be in when uh, potentially bad shit happens uh, to y'all. The Wait, exploration what? mode is on page 479. Yeah. <laughs> uh, since we are going to be doing uh, the a lot of sandboxing in this, this is something that we're going to become uh, quite familiar with. The reason I want to look at it in detail right now is to sort of work out what your SOP is going to be when you guys are traveling. And then unless you tell me otherwise, I'll just assume that's the process you guys are taking. Can you give us a handout, Kev? We'll put it in there. Uh, I think, oh yes, of course I can. Yeah, yeah. I didn't give you guys uh, handouts yet. And I didn't load your PDF versions. Right, well, do you guys want the PDF versions of, of your character sheets as well? It's no, it's no trouble for me to do it. Just if you don't need them, I'll, I'll you know. I don't need mine. Don't need to. I'm good. Good without. Okay. Jeff, uh, John, do you guys want your PD, the PDF version of your character sheets? I'm okay. okay. I don't need I'm it. No. Easy. One less thing I'll promise to do and not do. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see here. Party notes. And I'm going to put party notes slash loot. Uh, okay. So that y'all can do that, and as is customary, we're going to give it the appropriate marking here. Badonk. Got a badonk on it, it is a uh, a uh, propitious start to any campaign. There is your party notes handout, uh, guys. Nice. <laughs> Badonk lives forever in the party notes handout. Badonk yeah. was the first player character generated for PF2 on our channel. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yep, he will always hold that place of pride. And he loved treasure. And he loved dogs. So uh, another reason he has <laughs> a solid <laughs> place in my heart. <laughs> All right. Then, guys, um, what else need we do? Oh, let's talk about the, the exploration mode. Exploration mode's on page 479. Yeah, of the core rulebook. And I believe, I believe, I believe I can load... Oh, it's in the... I think you guys all have access to the... Which one is it? Yeah. yeah, the compendium, because I set that compendium sharing for this one. Uh, so you might be able to actually find that shit there as well. In a, there it is. You know, yep. Easy to reference thing. But here are the exploration mode. Uh, well, the, the activities they list here are avoid notice, defend, detect magic, follow the expert, which you can't do right now. You need to have an expert level skill. Hustle, investigate, repeat a spell, scout, and search. And then there's a bunch of skills you can also use for it that are listed on page 480, 480. If you guys have... Oh, and um, bah, 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 I believe you cannot sleep in heavy armor uh, without risk of fatigue in this game. So I know in, the, in our mm -hmm. other game, especially in our 2E games, uh, AD&D 2nd Edition, we've been kind of hand-waving it. We're not doing that in this game because... Yeah, uh, like heavy armor or medium armor or, or heavier than light. Um, I will tell yeah, you. Yeah, I think it's got to have the comfort. So at or least something. one of those things, uh, or two of the things that you mentioned, there are exactly the same thing, John. But uh, <laughs> well, no, I mean it's like is, is it, it just medium? Is it heavier? Thinking? Is it heavier than light? Heavier than light is medium. So I I think it's to tie. It I both? could be wrong. I think it's tied to a trait, and the trait, the armor trait, is called comfort. Oh yes. Hold on here. Let's see here. There is a. That does sound right. Get out to it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comfort. So padded armor uh, made by Mike Lindell uh, is very... That's going to be an extremely dated <laughs> reference as soon as <laughs> the campaign gets going. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah, comfort are so comfortable you can rest normally while wearing it. Uh, so any other armor, uh, you will be, let's see here. It takes one minute to don light armor, five to don medium or heavy, and one minute to remove any armor. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, the armor that's coming up in Archives of Nethys for comfort is armored coat, explorer's clothing, padded armor. Yeah. I'm just trying to find where the rules are for... Maybe it's in the resting... Um, it says, uh, core rule book, page 275. Sleeping in armor results in poor rest, leaving you fatigued. There we go. Page, yeah, right, so 480. So any armor except for comfort stuff. Got it. Any armor except for comfort stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if it has a, uh, like a sleep rating on it, uh, then you're free to wear it. Otherwise, no. Now, you can wear, can you wear, just out of curiosity, can you wear multiple layers at once and it just counts as the top one, or...? Um, I don't believe so, but I'm just thinking I'd probably wear have padded armor for when not because it's bulk L, so that doesn't really count for much, right? Uh, it counts as one towards everything. I, I think that you're only able to wear one uh, set of armor at the t at a time. But you could you could carry that you extra theory... armor and just <laughs> yeah, carry it. Wear it yeah. as your as your PJs. Yeah, I think that's like, actually a smart idea. Figure out how to get that into the sheet, and, yeah, because it's only two silver pennies. So, uh, you, you should be able to drag and drop it, just make sure it doesn't change what armor you're put it in your stowed instead of worn area. Yep, okay, okay. yeah, no, for that, I'll do the same. Okay, you realize when you guys are wearing them, I'm picturing like footy pajamas, so <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, I what I picture is Spider Man. Or Batman pajamas for a very specific <laughs> <Yeah>. reason. <laughs> the underroot pajamas. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, anything else you guys need to pick up? Uh, it's e it's evening now. You still got your food uh, that you can enjoy at um, uh, Lorana's uh, generosity, I guess. Maybe that's the way to say it. What? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else you need to pick up? I've spent days looking for the perfect hat. I have not found one yet. <laughs> <laughs> so Sherrod does have some rather fine clothing. She's wearing leather armor, but you can. She's got like a puffed shirt collar that, or a cuff that comes out from the bottom of the armor, and she's got some frills that come up over certain parts. And her clothes are very, very well cut and very. The fabrics are really nice. She actually spent money on fine clothing, so. Um, so yeah, she dresses really well, but she doesn't have a hat. So I ask all of you, if you see a really nice hat in a shop or elsewhere, please let me know. I'm in the, in the need of one right now. One correction I'm making, uh, guys, is Restov was the name of the former kingdom. Roslyn is the area, the region. Uh, Restov was the former kingdom. Restov and Issia. Okay. Cool. Okay. So. Uh, it's if not of interest. Yes, uh, one thing, I think, yeah, you can just drag the armor into your worn items, but you can switch for the little shield button, yeah. which we, you're wearing. Cool. Fantastic. It's a great character sheet. Right. Yeah. Okay. Ah. So, uh, anything else you guys wish to do before you set off uh, for <clears throat> Navactus Crossing? I think Remy and I are going to compare dueling capes just to see. Okay. Uh, Trog, would you kindly give us, uh, what is your lore that you have again? Uh, banditry lore. Love it. Give us a banditry lore check, please. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So then if, uh, let's see here, Remy, Vaz, and Bromel, if you could take three gold off of your kit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Then you have only got coppers left. <laughs> <laughs> the, a friend of ours tells a story from uh, uh, his uh, gaming days as a kid uh, when a friend, like they were playing uh, in a campaign and uh, the DM hands over a note to one of the, uh, or the thief in the party hands a note to the DM, the DM nods, rolls something behind the screen, hands a note to the paladin, and the paladin in the party says, Oh my god, someone stole my gold! And he turns to the thief, you! And the thief's like, huh? And he's like, you're good at stealing stuff. Will you find who stole my gold? <laughs> and the thief's like, it'll cost you. <laughs> That's great. <right. laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, what I was looking for is what you know about Nevactus Crossing. 
Mm-hmm. So Navactus Crossing, um, in addition to being a notoriously hard to pronounce uh, type name, which I always want to call Navatkas, uh, it is run by, this is what you know, Trog, so you can feel free to share with um, yeah. what anyone else wants to, to uh, hear about. Uh, it is run by a uh, feller named uh, Irvin Ravanasu, who is the mayor of uh, Navactus Crossing. Uh, there is also a sheriff there named Lauren Caven. Uh, and there is a church, a single church there to Pharasma, the goddess of graves. Uh, Navactus Crossing has the benefit, even though it is a tiny community of only 140 uh, uh, souls, uh, mostly human, some gnomes and some dwarves, uh, it is a hive for gossip. You can learn an awful lot because there's constantly people who are moving up and down the road here, traveling to the um, uh, either to the elsewhere in the River Kingdoms or to elsewhere in uh, to Numeria, to um, Ustalav, to any other cool places that are nearby. Um, that's what you would know about this place, uh, Trog, and you might know a name or two to to look up while you're there. Yeah. So what, if anything, do you uh, share with the others? Uh, well, I would share that, the names of the people I know. Definitely the name of the sheriff. Steer clear of them. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, why don't you give us one more banditry lore check, too? Let's see what you know about this hungry sword. Oh, right. The hungry sword. Not oh. one! <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> no. Here's the no. thing. Um, one thing. So first off, you could spend a hero point and re-roll that if you like. Uh, yeah, let's do it because we okay. have yeah. uh, time. Oh, I don't have a token on this page. Do I? Uh, you can adjust Let's it on see. your character sheet. Uh, top right. Underneath oh, you there level. it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it should adjust to your token as well once we get back to that. Yeah, oh. see? Uh, you actually know precisely the, the person they're talking about and... The thing that you've been kind of reluctant to share is that last you heard, um, he kind of ran afoul of the followers of a rival bandit, uh, kind of a bandit chief in ascent who calls himself the Stag Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that is... Um, yeah. Putting that in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, scared Jay, that did we lose Jamie? We might have. So, and yeah, Jamie. Jamie's got the little swirl of death. Yeah. He just freaked out when he I, heard. I have refreshed. Can you not see me? Oh. Let's hear. Let's try. <laughs> I'm gonna hit reconnect. Or I don't. See here. I've got everybody once again. So if you hit reconnect, guys, you, you might be able to get Jamie back. Yeah. Boom. We got, we got. Okay. Yep. Yep. Worked. I still have everybody. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Good. So that's what you also know, uh, Trog. Now, if um, I'll leave it to you to decide what um, Trog shares uh, with everyone. Probably nothing about the Hungry Sword yet. He doesn't really know these people today, so. Okay. Eh. There. He'll wait. Okay. So then, guys, what, uh, two things. Uh, first, let me bring you back to the old main page here so you can... Or actually, let's go to... Uh, here we go. Rest of. Um, two things. One, um, why doesn't everyone give themselves a hero point? And two, why don't we take our mid-session break, and then we'll come back and have you guys actually venture out into the old wild. And you can tell us... Uh, first, we still need to determine what... Um, exploration mode things you're going to be doing. Okay? Yep. So we'll be back, uh, for those listening at home, we'll be back momentarily.
almost didn't make the swashbuckler. Glad you did. I'm like, there's already three sword trained sword brother dudes. I'm like, <laughs> just more, damn, more swords to stab people with. I'm like, we don't have a healer, but we've got extra swords. Maybe we'll just finish people off faster. Well, if you take a battle medicine, you could not have to be a cleric and heal people. <laughs> if you wanted to. Or I have I have a spell that can heal, but or we can just suffer through. <laughs> PF two is kind of difficult without a healer, but we'll manage. Right, but I would play a cleric on Wednesday. Well, don't play a cleric. No, no, no one's blaming you. We all decided not to play clerics. <laughs> I almost made a druid, but I'm like, oh wow, I don't have time to read all the druid stuff, and I. <laughs> don't want to do it a disservice so i'm like work's just stupid right now so i'm like if i had more time to read that's what dedication uh, feats are for that's what what dedication feats are for you can multi-class later okay nah i thought about a ranger too i'm like ranger's going to be useful in camps campaigns mm-hmm. so i play a ranger in another game. <laughs> that's why i avoided the things too i play a cleric ranger in another game yeah I was like, I kind of want to play Rogue, but you know what? Swashbuck was kind of like Calador. So mm-hmm. kind of want it to be like Calador. I want it to be like an agile fighter thief. I went with mm. a strong fighter slash bard. So I went to yeah, like, strength for- charisma with a secondary index. So. So we have like the three musketeers, and I guess that makes Sherrod D'Artagnan. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure Remy and Vaz and Trog are all pretty. Um, I'm not sure about the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what, what, when George gets back, let's remind me to bring up the fact that detect magic slows your speed to half. Yeah. George, uh, so. we decided not to let, not have you do Ted Detect Magic because we didn't want to be <laughs> Maybe it's when Issa's doing that at first and you guys are like, buddy, um, <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, have got to fucking go crawls. here. <laughs> save it for the dungeon crawls, not the overland. <laughs> so what are you guys um, thinking of, uh, and, and feel free to either like say or put in chat or whatnot, what, what um, uh, exploration <laughs> activities are we assuming that you're doing during your... Um, Exploration when you're yeah. in the in the wild. A lot of these things slow you down to half speed. Um, like scouting, searching, investigating. Yeah, you need feats, I think, to speed you up. For so yeah, many things. Um, if there's yeah, nothing, of, that's fine. It, it's yeah. uh, it would just be making um, uh, roll, basically when you go into combat uh you'd be rolling perception for initiative yeah in most cases well, i mean and le- unless we all want to go at half speed i mean then we could pretty much all take a activity yeah let me see what you're it's not a bad option it takes more days but you're less right. easily surprised you're less easily ambushed that kind of thing right since the days are really in the game. So 25. Um, pa, 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 pa. Mm. That would reduce you to one half activities per day. So it would mean you would cross a hex in two days. Yeah. And I'm, it, I'm thinking we're fairly fresh to adventuring. Um, I don't know. And yeah, you don't need it. Would make the, legs. I guess here's the thing is that if you decide to take that approach, it'll take you 20 days of the 30 in the month to just travel oh, yeah. there and back. Yeah, we ha- we don't know if we have to go anywhere else. Either. Like we get there, we might be going to another place still. And we're traveling a, on a road for like three quarters of the way, I think, to the, uh, the fort. All that means is Mainly. that you're just not getting lost. There's not a chance of getting lost. Yeah. Doesn't speed you up at all. I think uh, narratively that Remy would be more cautious when he's off a road and in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless something happens and spooks him. But. We'll just drag Darwinius's corpse behind the 
Group. <laughs> I don't know if George is in range for his ear pods to be kicking in, but yeah, he can hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys think? I suppose it means that either you're going to be engaging in some um, expor some uh, exploration mode um, activities and move at that half pace, or you just scrap them all together. What do you guys think? I think we start without and just see how it goes. Yep. That's to, right. to John's yeah, point, can... characters don't know better, really. They haven't experienced. Oh, maybe we should be searching. Right. Still close to home, in a sense, so we could always yes. return if something went extremely foul. But yeah, I think we might throw caution to the wind at first. Can you avoid the doubt? Faz isn't great at stealth. <laughs> One thing we were pointing out, uh, George, that prompted the discussion yeah. is that detect magic means you move at half speed. Uh, I think so, almost all of them make you move at half speed. Uh, yeah, until you like, get some yeah. some uh, some skill feats or general feats, uh, yeah. they are yeah. uh, fairly slow. So then, yeah, let's see here. That's fine with me. Okay, I mean, not doing it is fine with me. Okay. Now let's see here. You know what? Oh God, I wish I had thought of this before. Let me see if I can find an image for it. And honestly, perception is my highest initiative skill to use anyway, so. <laughs> I was going to try and find, <laughs> uh, like, a um, what a green monitor uh, Oregon Trail image to use as your... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's your thing. I, I, I wish yeah. I thought it before, and I cannot find it now, but... <laughs> That's between sessions. I'll, uh, I'll upload an image of the Oregon Trail <laughs> uh, cart. But I think in the interim, let's see here. <laughs> wagon. Oh, you guys don't have a wagon. Hey, I got the Dark Sun wagon in here, guys. Oh, that went well. <laughs> <For us. laughs> Definitely. <laughs> hmm. It's not quite. Let's go over to your exploration map. Go and uh, here. So I'll suggest we use for your map. Look at that, guys. We're now playing a game in the third dimension. Look at that three-quarter perspective. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so fancy. Yeah, amazing, amazing uh, right? Whew. Our uh, team of Imagineers worked for you know seconds <laughs> on it. It's really. Quite something. Okay, now all, all I of you just guys... don't have my 3D glasses on. <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> uh, maybe think of Steve because Steve insisted on one time we went. I can't remember what movie it was. He went to, and he grabbed the the 3D glasses, and we're like, "Buddy, it's not it's not 3D." And throughout the movie, he kept insisting. I think they're working. <laughs> it's not That's a 3D great. movie, man. Like... <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh, man. Okay. I appreciate his optimism. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he seemed to enjoy it more, so <laughs> that worked out well. Hey, that's uh, what's important. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, guys, uh, what um, you're supposed to be the second day of your travel, which means we hit yet another important inaugural event. It is time for Dave to roll weather before you guys start moving for the day. Dave, would you kind of give us a d20 roll, please? Ooh, a six. You know what's exciting about this is we've got a brand new table to work from, so you don't know what's good, you don't know what's bad oh, yet. yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Actually, uh, one thing I'm, I'm fucking up is that uh, you actually only, we roll a flat roll first to determine whether there is a weather event, and then, that's also after we roll the precipitation. I'm screwing up. There's three stages we go through in this. The so first thing we're rolling for mm -hmm. is precipitation. So Dave rolled a six. Um, this is springtime. There is no precipitation today. Dave, would you nice. give us a D20 roll once again, please? It is an absolutely average spring day. Nothing eventful for it. And finally, this is where the real money is, Dave. Give us a 17 or better for a weather event. Yes! <laughs> of course. 
sudden hurricane. <laughs> Uh, Jamie and James, uh, welcome to our Night Below campaign. <laughs> uh, Dave, would you give us once again a D20 roll, please? Weather man. <laughs> this is where we lose all our gear. <laughs> you just, our, our no, no, we're blow staying away. inside. Some kind we'll of noise. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay, let me just quickly read this. this. This could potentially kill you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> This is where oh, fun campaign. the weather the day before. But hey, you know what? Maybe we stay in there. <laughs> yeah. yes. So how yeah. was the Kingmaker campaign? It lasted exactly two hours and 20 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. It was a beautiful day when we got killed. <laughs> <laughs> it was an average day with no precipitation. And suddenly lightning. <laughs> an average day with no precipitation swallowed us whole. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> You can just sit there all you want and laugh, George, but you know what? Your horrors from Frostbound or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, that, 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 that did enough damage. <laughs> Psychic <laughs> damage. I'd say, yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> I can't deny it. But um, I was, the, a, D, I was a, G, a DM when I was writing that. Not a player. I would never have written it that way. Somebody <laughs> has to play test the far extreme fringe rolls on your tables. Yeah, yeah that's true. Well, we soul. seem to always do that. <laughs> Howling soul storms. That's and... called karma, George. <laughs> yeah, I, I brought you all down. It's true. <laughs> that was an amazing weather event, though. Remember the the dagger uh, snow, uh, too. Yeah. Yep. Fabulous stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Only bringing that up now because we want this to seem real dangerous. Yeah, I agreed. I mean, also roll twenty hates us, so that's a, it's a combination. All yep. right, so then, uh, guys, uh, I have a very exciting thing, and and here's one of the things I will say I love about uh, PF2 is uh, it is so easy to bump stuff up or down levels. Uh, it is very easy mm. to as long as you got access to your game mastery guide. If you see something and it's uh, potentially going to fucking murder everybody, <laughs> you can very easily. <laughs> edge that down just a little bit if you're so inclined and helpfully right. the game also has a 10th level equivalent guys so uh if we want to go the other way <laughs> we've already had is... one fatality on the channel this week uh <laughs> we... that's right <laughs> let me get this straight if only one character survives do they get the cumulative experience for the day by themselves uh they no. get all the experience that is available absolutely the so fact that we are doing leveling. milestone leveling means <laughs> <laughs> that is a currency with very little value. So, guys, um, everyone is setting out uh, for your first day out. Kachunk, we're moving into hex number one. What I would like is for everyone, uh, and you are on, it looks like you're traveling on the north side of the uh, Shrike River. Would you each kindly give us um, a, oh, either if you are trained in survival, you can roll that, which has a much lower DC, or you can give us a perception roll. So survival, if you are trained. Oh, that's... Hero point, hero point. Uh, do, hold, hold on, we, we got a yep. success here already. Oh, you only needed one, okay. Yep, yep, uh, so... Okay, good. It is, and this is, let's see here. Um, oh, you know what? This is actually going to be partway through your travel day because you already run into something. So, <clears throat> why don't you tell us, guys, what is the mood among the as yet unnamed adventuring party? And I'm going to keep calling you that until you guys come up with a name. A beautifully average spring morning, right? Yep. Yeah. That's what you say. What a beautifully average spring morning. Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> the time of his life out here. It's been ages since he got out of the city and from his training and just breathing the air and, you know, probably partially jogging ahead of everyone and keeping their spirits up. And it's wide open as well, too. There are hills, like, uh, kind of going up and down in here, too. And I wonder if I've got an illustration that'll fit the old thing here, because we don't need to stay on this map. We know when you guys are all going to die. Uh, I guess Mark would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. X number one. Exactly. It's, it's, on, the, it's on the GM layer. <laughs> Remy's probably whistling a tune to the uh, bar, uh, song he heard last night. 
<laughs> he's a, oh my god, he's a swiper. <laughs> Steal one of the rules content? I, oh my goodness. That's no, just stuck in his head. Trog's happy. He's thinking, hey, I'm with a bunch of people who don't blame me for all their problems in life right now. This is great. <laughs> yes. So they yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> there we go. You, you catch one forest on fire and then... Exactly. <laughs> no, I'll let you forget sure it. Cher is pretty sure that uh, you guys are not out together because you would have probably tried something last night. So we're all good. Good, good. I'm just trying to like watch everybody, see what they do, mimic what they do, so that I don't accidentally fall into quicksand <laughs> or some crazy the scene thing. Seen of uh, Roy Scheider and, and his kid in uh, Jaws. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so what um uh, uh what you guys find is uh, who's got the highest perception training right now? I know some of you guys have expert in. Uh, Perception. I can't remember what classes get oh. that. I, I do have expert, but my role was horrible. Okay. Shara has expert no, I as well. I have training, so I've got I'm trained. That's it. Okay. Oh, nice. So um, it's uh, Vaz. Uh, uh, and John, you said that Rem has got a crap um, wisdom bonus. What's Shara's wisdom like? Uh, Shara's got a plus one. And uh, Vaz? Plus one. Plus one. So as you two, you can see... Uh, up to the side, um, there is, uh, this is, uh, gives you an idea of sort of what you're traveling through. The mountains would be in, in a further distance, but just the ruggedness and uh, there is a road, of course, running through uh, here that's very quite well traveled. And you're making your way along. Um, it is about three hours into your first day of travel. And I'm interrupting as well, too. I gave uh, John an opportunity to tell us what, what Rem is uh, thinking of. What is everyone else? What's everyone else's first, you know, thoughts as they're hitting the trail here, as they're getting those first a couple of hours of uh, road with uh, Brevoid disappearing behind them and the open road ahead? Uh, yep. Similarly, glad to be out. And as she goes, she's always constantly thinking about, you know, uh, looking at the lay of the land, where you'd place troops. <laughs> yeah. What are the vantage points? <laughs> she's <laughs> like the most insufferable war gamer. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I'd deploy my squad over there, and then I'd uh, be putting my uh, tank over there. And... <laughs> Fucking shut up! <laughs> Remy's gonna like snag like a passing wildflower, hand it to Vaz, and says, "Stop! Stop and smell the flowers, not conquer the flowers, Vaz." <laughs> I, I think uh, Druinius is uh, kind of just look, taking everything in and seeing patterns, like kind of in like a John Nash kind of way, like. Suddenly they appear like, uh, you know, in like uh, magical s symbols in my mind. Uh, and then I keep having to be told to like, hey, come on, let's keep moving. And then I, <laughs> oh, yeah, so, so, oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Brummel is, um, I think that, that he feels more at home here by the river basin than in the city. And so he's he's quite comfortable that he's traveling with his fellow swords and these new companions on what feels like something that's larger than anything that's been present in his life before. So I think, you know, he's, he's enjoying the, the current mood. Mm -hmm. Trog? <clears throat> well, as Trog said, he's happy to be traveling with people that don't blame him for all their <laughs> troubles and history. New slate, clean slate, this feels great. <laughs> I, oh, I just broke the slate, guys, I'm sorry. Um... Well, yeah, it's a perfect time to crush your hope and dreams right now. <laughs> so as you're traveling along, it is um, Vaz. Um, I think as you're trying to study, you know, make get your idea for the, for the lay of the land, uh, you know you've got at least one day that you'll be... Um, it's at least like two days of travel between here and when you get to uh, Navakta's uh, landing. And you're looking to the north on one of these moments. Maybe you get, this is when you guys take a... Um, a uh, water break at say 10 o'clock you've been on the road for three hours and you can see that there is someone about maybe 
but 150 feet off of the road in the field uh, who seems to have, and the reason they, they are stand out is because uh, their light flesh of their upper body is exposed in the cool air. Uh, they have a uh, tunic and whatnot taken off and they are currently flagellating themselves facing northward. Schwack. 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 You cannot hear anything from this distance, but uh, um, except for the crack of the um, the scourge that they are hitting themselves with. But while that drew your attention, the thing that fixes your attention is the plume of smoke on the horizon. And you need not uh, make any further roll because you stop drink in a smell of this air and it is faint at this point but there is the sulfurous stink of a fire coming there is a wild fire coming in this direction you would estimate it is an hour out and if it comes here and reaches you, it is unlikely, if you're looking across at everyone, that anyone will survive this. What do you say, Vaz? All right. Uh, I say, you know, see ahead. I've got some uh, problems coming. Shara and Bra so, Brommel, you can both see exactly. If, if Vaz is pointing up with those perception rolls, you're immediately able to pick out, like, Oh, shit. Look, everyone. So how is the river? Uh, the river is... Uh, a, you know, like you're not directly on the uh, traveling on the side of it. It's not good... Uh, at least it's not a prudent thing to build it right next to the river in case of flooding. If it seasonally floods, you're, you're losing your road or having to rebuild your road all the time, so... It is a little further north. It's about a half mile off. Maybe, Maybe you could, we could make it to the other side. Yeah, you could make it to there and then down into the water. It'll be quite cold, and in, for some of you, it's going to be a bit of a, a hustle to get there. Is it the um? Is it, would it be wide enough to offer protection against a wildfire? Uh, to get in the river, yes. If you, as long as you get yourself in the river, uh, the only other threat would be uh, choking to death on the uh, smoke. If the smoke comes and goes over you, so you may need to get a little further out into the river to do that. Uh, the other option is um, uh, to try and build like a temporary shelter. Um, but the... You're trying to do a far break. But... Yeah, so you could try <laughs> do something like that using uh, survival. If you do so, uh, then Basically, you're making a roll every hour to make sure that it uh, uh, it does, because it's not going to be like a single line that just whoosh, kind of goes over you. Uh, it can persist and keep you know burning. So, now my suggestion was let's try and get to the river and then try and if we have time, put a fire break around there, because then you've got a plan B of getting building in the a river. fire. A proper fire break is going to take you about an hour, so you kind of can only do one effectively. You can mm -hmm. either try and sprint for the river, or you can try and build. Uh, fire break, or if you got something else. Say we spread the, the river. flow of the river. I'm sorry. So what was that, Jamie? Uh, the flow. What's the flow of the river like? Uh, it's spring, so it's pretty strong. Is it go pushing away from the fire or towards the fire? Well, I mean, like the fire's going to burn up towards the bank is, and it runs the flow of the river will be perpendicular to it. Does, does uh, uh, everyone, I, I just, I think I noticed uh, something uh, over over there in the, where you're looking. Uh, do you see, uh, it's a, I think maybe a campfire of, or something. Well, I've got, it's I've got survival four if we want to do a, 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 a fire break. But. And people could aid with that as well. You roll against uh -oh. a DC 20 on a success, you get plus one. On a crit, you get plus two. On a critical failure, it's minus one. Can we do the fire break DC near the river? DC 20. 
near the river. Yeah. Yeah. Say, DC say, 20. Say, but we all hear pretty points. tough. Yeah, you should try to hustle. The thing is, Dave, you can't get to You can do one or the other, really. It takes you an hour to effectively build a fire break. So one yeah. that would keep you safe for the, for the wildfire, that's about as long as you've got before it reaches here. And so you can kind of, you can run for the river or you can try and uh, stay here, build a fire break. Well, Shara whistles as loud as she can to get the attention of the person who's whipping himself and points towards the fire in hopes that that at least They're facing it. Oh, shit. Yeah, like they they're really in the field it. facing it and whipping themselves. Maybe they called it. Damn it. Yeah, better not to be over here. Then I say we hustle the river. We could douse our blankets or something to give us some way to breathe. But we, I don't think we'll survive out in the open. <laughs> I think the Canadians in the crowd are having a Canada heritage moment uh, commercial <laughs> come to mind <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's our Canadian content for the evening. <laughs> now you get well, the tax break. Exactly. Yeah, me, Thank you, Brock, for this foundation. <laughs> let me turn to look at Trog. He's like, you're a fire expert. What do you think? Well, I think I might survive it, but I don't think you want to be in it. <laughs> Trog, give us a survival check. Let's see if there's anything else that uh, springs to mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's Real so pretty. pretty. <laughs> the almighty thinks he can get... Trog out of this mess, but the yeah. rest of us are... <laughs> His eyes are glazed over, just oh, yeah. so much <laughs> fire. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, do we think that we're, we we can't make it to the river in time? Is that why we're reluctant to make a run for it? Uh, it'll it'll be an it, it's good that there is a chance of failure with it. It's going to be a relatively easy yeah. run, but it's run across difficult terrain. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you fail, that might mean like a sprained ankle or something like that. A critical fail might mean like, ah, yeah, goddamn prairie dogs. <laughs> It'll be burning our hero yeah. points here, guys. I see. Well, I was going to say, we, we have, same, I, we have a lot of hero points. I feel like it's. To the river! Let's do it to the river then. Agreed. Okay. Right. Yes. Would everyone, let me grab my uh, game or KM's screen. You know, and it's funny, I was, one of the feats I was looking at was like, uh, water breathing thing, it would be like five times the normal water breathing. I'm like, no, no, I'll never need that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then, ooh, it's gonna be a tricky one, tricky one, tricky one. So it'll be an easy task, but it is a fairly high. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oof. Would everyone give us? Mm -mm -mm -mm. A an athletics check, please, against a DC of fifteen. Oh, Shit, I will be here reporting that because that's one of my high skills, uh, okay. and that should not be rolling ones. Okay, so we got here <laughs> point as well. I'm gonna hear okay. point as well. Yeah, I missed it by one. To... Honestly, it's my, ah! it's my highest. Yes. Skill. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the hero Remy, so... Remy just about twists his ankle as he gets ready to go, and then he just catches himself and books it. All right, yeah, there we go. All That's right, so like uh, let's see here. Did anyone get a 25 or better? Well, I should have more hero points already, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah I don't think you've... Oh, you guys came so close. And yeah, uh, no uh, um, So what happens unfortunately trogs is so bad it's actually a critical fail because remember if you roll 10 less than mm -hmm. target numbers in some things uh that counts as a critical fail mm -hmm. well trog it's been a point in trying to roll it right uh he has that is the re-roll that is not the critical oh. fail the nat one he rolled oh no what? i rolled the nat one no i've only rolled once oh have you only rolled once trog yeah oh yeah. then yeah you can go again yeah okay awesome might as well try it one more time yeah all right, here we go. Well, and I hopefully at least won't get a critical failure. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> You're meant to fail that skill. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Well, at least you like fire. He's fascinated by the fire. Of course it makes sense. All right, so I, here's it's, what happens yeah. is uh, Trog, uh, it, it's more the fact that Trog, you've had to fucking go absolutely all out to train. Like, you're a pretty quick little little goblin. But this is just full tilt running with a bunch of people whose legs are a lot longer than yours. 
Uh, so I think you are fatigued by the time you reach the side of the river. Mm. So there's a fatigued thing that's on there. You're going to need to get a full night's sleep in order to shake that. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a setting on here somewhere? Yep, for top under yeah. all that. Top, uh, like, mm, top third of the character sheet on the front page, there is a list of uh, traits that you can click on. Oh, there, yeah. Yep, just click on fatigued. Uh, so as you guys get to the to the the river, it's it's flowing quite quite quickly um, because of that spring runoff, and uh, you can tell that like Trog is wheezing, and he's about four shades lighter green than what he was when you started running this. <laughs> Looking behind, the smoke is is much much thicker. It is coming fast, Vaz. Perhaps even faster than you expected. Now that you guys are at the river, um, there's a bunch of brush. And, uh, uh, oddly, Trog, all you can think of is like, this is going to burn really well. There's a bunch of dry <laughs> leaves and whatnot that are accumulated by the side of the river. There's some scrub uh, uh, bushes and stuff. And the, the oncoming uh, smoke right now, it looks like a storm front hanging low. The only thing that makes it uh, look very different is the stink. There's all, like... It's you can taste it in the back of your your throat now. That stink. Anyone who's ever driven near or close to a uh, forest fire, or who lives in California, will know precisely what I'm talking about. There's that unique, you know. Uh, I shouldn't fucking joke. We, we can ex look forward to another. No, it's true. BC forest fire, you know, stuff coming into Calgary uh, this summer. Uh, so yeah, the um, th there's just this heavy uh, stink. It's it's not hard to breathe yet, but I mean. It stinks. It just st smells like uh, a burning fire, a, b a burning forest fire everywhere here. What are you guys thinking of doing now that you're at the river? Ropes. Get your ropes. Uh, Shara, you actually have experience on, on the um, from your backstory uh, in the uh, on the seas. Here's the concern. This is like this is about the fastest this river will run at any point during the year. Uh, with a spring runoff, it's higher than normal and it's moving quick and it's probably pretty fucking cold still. The the biggest concern of all of those is the fact that it is high and it is moving fast. Yeah, so someone can get swept away pretty quick. Quite easily. Mm -hmm. uh, Trog does not seem like the most athletic of uh, pyroman you know, pyromaniacs. No. Yeah, so that's why she's <laughs> already pulling her rope out and she's going to tie it around Trog and... Uh, tie him to her even with the length of rope so that we got to pull him in or oh yeah i appreciate that keep her from getting pulled away okay maybe we can all kind of hold <laughs> on to that same rope as we go down <laughs> yeah, her um put, on, uh, put, like a chain put trog in the middle yeah that would be good my legs okay. are very short i'll um I think Brommel could go in the back, um, and uh, maybe his tail is a last resort. <laughs> oh, he's aquatic, isn't he? Um, I don't, I don't think so. He's underbrush. He's um, oh, under. Okay, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any? Uh, you know, I'm not sure if this depiction is uh, exactly what it is. Which the, if it yeah, is, yeah, it's much wider and but... much faster uh, flowing. You can picture something closer. Well, but I... So, no, go ahead. What are you asking? Go uh, ahead. Uh, well, I was in, in, not about the river itself, but about the river bank. If there were like uh, protruding boulders or tr large trees or anything, we could tie a rope to. Yeah. Uh, for here, there's trees. Or is but it more like the this? concern you'd have anything you're tying to the tree, the the fire might reach it. Then it might burn. Yeah. I, yeah. I was uh, thinking if we could find a a good sized rock and wrap a rope around it and stick that in the water so it would hold tight, it would keep the rope so, saturated. Uh, yeah. If you could move the rock, but the trouble is because of the spring runoff, the the water the bank will be much higher. So all that like the the big heavier shit that would have accumulated over the centuries, that stuff's going to be like ten feet underwater at this point. Well, here here's what I was thinking was. Um, it's sort of a last resort, or not a last resort, but a helpful, maybe helpful situation, which would be if we were all trying to make our way across to the other bank, the far bank, this would be a way to prevent us from just getting completely dragged downstream if we like had problems swimming across um, so that our companions might be able to still help us because we only went 40 feet away or whatever amount of rope we had. That's what I was thinking, even though it might get burned up eventually when the fire comes down. The river's kind of wide, um, right? Like. 
pretty wide. This is a big river. Yeah, like this yeah, is yeah. this is okay, uh, so it's not really gonna work. Closer to like so, the the mighty Mississippi, uh, more oh, so than oh, wow. the uh, okay. You know, yeah, you, so we, we, you want to be in a river like this? It is a forest fire. Yes, yeah, so we just want to be in it until the fire passes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, are we, we're at the bank at this point. Can we start to get a sense of how deep it is? Uh, the, well, again, like there's not really a bank at this point that there, there, I mean, there's not the bank you would oh, expect yeah. normally the river because of the time of year, uh, it'll have <laughs> swollen up so you can get to where the water starts, but it sort of, it has a mm -hmm. bunch of submerged, uh, trees and, and bushes and stuff like that mm -hmm. that would grow on the side of the river. That are now good. within the water? Within yeah. the water, yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, which there's probably so a bunch of shit underwater, actually, as well. That's what I was... Yeah, yes. that's what I was... So this is, actually, yeah. this is actually good, because if it was a river itself, it would probably be deeper near the edges, whereas now it's going to be shallower near the edges, because it's... Uh, as it sinks. No, it, it is quite deep quite quickly, because it isn't the natural bank that, that goes down into the river at this point. But what there is, is there's going to be a bunch of submerged trees and bushes and stuff like that that have survived this cycle of annual flooding right. right so there will be so let's wade out to a tree and uh, say use ropes. ropes to lash ourselves to it okay and then we'll be lashed to a tree that's in the water uh it sounds like vaz is willing to dive into this frigid water and uh and do this for us so that's what vaz, I heard. why don't you give us a this is going to be <laughs> let's see here uh to, I'm going to incorporate the cold. You don't have any resistance to cold of any kind, right? No. No. Okay. So let's set this. Uh, no resistance to cold, and there's the force of the thing. Let's make it an 18. So okay. an athletics well, at 18, please. And if anyone so uh, wishes to assist I'll leave in my ways, rope as well. I'll tie myself to the rope to let myself in. So if I get swept away, you yeah. guys can grab hold of me. I'll certainly try to assist because I'm pretty athletic. Yeah, so why don't you give us an assist roll first here, Remy? Hold the rope. It's a DC 20. Yeah, sure. You can roll one. Nat 20, <laughs> baby. Look at that. Oh, nice. First yeah. nat he, oh, he second like nat 20. Right. feet down and just, you ain't going All right, anywhere. so you got plus two from Remy. Uh, Shara, why don't you give us an athletics check as well? 18. So that's, oh, you want to hero point that? You got three right now. You're getting another in 13 minutes. Okay, that is not enough. Okay, uh, but it's not a crit fail, uh, so you're not uh, making it harder. Uh, so then, uh, Vaz, you got a athletics check at plus two, and I can't remember if I've, I've set your character sheets to prompt for modifiers. If I didn't, it doesn't. Does not. It doesn't. But oh. that's twenty seven. Yeah. Then. So everyone, go to the uh, rightmost tab on their character sheet at the top left. There's a, a box you can tick to say something like prompt for bonuses or. Something about bonuses. Oh. If you could tick that, it will automatically prompt you for modifiers. Bonus to yeah, roll. My, yep. Bonus yep. to roll. Yeah. My, mine's mine is oh, is already ticked for some reason. I mean, good. Uh, yeah, I've been I, 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 going through yeah. that this whole time. I, yeah. I remembered on one of you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So fast. Like yeah. You. Uh, why don't you describe for us what it looks like as you're going down into this frigid and fast-moving water? Yeah, I'll have a big old wade across <sighs> through that. It's nice, warming chainmail. And it's the and thing go. about this as well, for the, especially for this uh, early runoff too. The thing you you, you don't um, that really is is uh, surprising about it is once you hit flat surfaces. So like when your legs are in there, it's not so bad because the water goes around it. But as soon as you get down to that weight where it starts hitting your waist and your chest, it's like someone trying to fucking pull you, like push you out from under you. So, but Vaz, you just you know dig yourself in. It's literally wrestling with nature until you get underneath there and yet you, uh, you manage to get a, a rope the other end maybe of the one you've got or is there a second yep. rope well i've got uh, yeah i brought but uh, yeah so i if somebody lent me a rope i'll use that for the uh, once i get to the tree okay. itself all right yeah, sure had, sure had the rope that's got trog tied to one in to the middle okay and extra rope okay so, so you got remy's rope tied around there and then you're able to come back out. Um, it is freezing, but also remarkably invigorating. You hear Remy shouting down, uh, uh, just like the ice baths, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, you, uh, Vaz, um, one other consideration that you've got now, now that you've actually been down in it, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be hard to swim against. Uh, getting yourself out of the water is going to be a, a, a chore as well, uh, because the longer you spend in it, the more exhausted you're likely to be. And then you're going to have to fight against that, that current to get yourself out of the water. That's one thing for everyone to consider. The other thing is, is fucking cold. So if you're spending even an hour or so in there, uh, it is going to be a very cold mm -hmm. circumstance. So well, now I've yeah. So I just say the rest of you should stay out to the last minute. Give me that last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Trog really wants to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like standing exactly. in the dock until you kind of yank. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you guys doing? Yeah, if anything else, uh, you have now a rope that is tied to a submerged uh, tree or something like that. Start tying each other to the ropes. Get ourselves loaded up. Okay. Even if there's some slack, if you're swimming, but the rope's holding a little bit, it'll help stabilize you a bit make it less difficult is anyone not trained in athletics i am actually trained in it i'm not i'm, I'm not. not okay so then let's quickly peruse uh ye old swimming rules I feel like while there, you know, all this is being done with the ropes and et cetera, I'm uh, sitting there using my occultism to try to understand the esoteric lore and obscure mysticism of how uh, I could survive this. And then somebody just slaps me like, D stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cheryl oh, walks up to you and, and kind of gives you a weird stare from like yeah. just around the corner. That's good. And then I, I, I come to and I'm like, I realize like, oh, yeah, what, what am I doing? OK, so here is what we're going to be uh, rolling. Oh, we get to take advantage of the environmental rules. Guys, you are just spoiling me for this uh, first <laughs> session. We're doing our best. We get to do some cold damage <laughs> from freezing water. I get to, and if if, uh, if it isn't obvious, I know from direct experience of what I, of which I speak when you're crawling into a spring runoff <laughs> Arctic uh, stream. Oh, really? Oh, I've swam in Alaskan springs before. They are cold. It's, mm. It was the cold and the speed. Like that's the thing. Like I, I almost got oh, I fucking swept away. A friend grabbed my hand. Oh my god. Well, because you oh didn't really, you don't realize. Like you see, it's, oh, it's swift moving water, and it's clear, it's cr like crazy, crazy clear. But then it's as soon as it hits any kind of resistance, it's just like, whoa, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And then that yeah. first initial shock of hitting water that cold, your breath just is out. Oh, yeah, your, just, your, your mm. air is out of your body. <laughs> someone standing it's, on your chest. Yeah. <laughs> no, wow. It's fucking crazy. Um, no, I'm not going to do that then. I was going to do that, but now I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, again, if you had friends who tied stuff to you, like that's, that's not really that bad then. Oh, but yeah, actually. It's when you're yeah. a dumbass and decide to go in with no protection. <laughs> Oh, Either boy. you better be able to touch the ground with your feet or have a life vest on, otherwise you're, mm -hmm. you're going to drown. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, there's just nothing but pointy rocks to break your fall. So. Yeah, of course. Yes, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, boy. Okay. Um, here it is. Here it is. All right. So um, environmental damage, that's what I was looking for. Okay, we are going to do some fun stuff now. Uh, then, uh, how close are you before you're going to jump into the uh, the river? How do, is it when the glow reaches kind of the horizon? Is it when you see the fire? Is it when uh, you? Yeah, this is great stuff. <laughs> uh -huh. What are you thinking? <laughs> I mean, I think we should give ourselves enough time to actually do this in case we have problems. So uh, I would say the moment I start feeling the heat, because you'll feel that coming pretty quickly. But once it's once it's warm enough that your skin is like feeling tender, uh, I'd rather be in the river then. So that's when we should jump in. I and my guess would be, for me is that, uh, about ten minutes before I think it's going to reach us, and I, uh, I I'm not actually I'm not terrible at survival. So I can try to make a guess. Sure, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, give us a survival check. Uh, let's see how this goes. And I've got hero points. Uh, so there it, it is. Water. <laughs> nope, hero point. Okay. 
Nope. Nope. <laughs> All right, so I'm just making a random guess. Uh, this is just, and, uh, I, I think that you maybe in theory have experienced this before too, but as you get in and the entire northern skies are now completely overcast with smoke uh, and the acrid stink of this burning landscape, uh, the certainty of that person that you saw now being charred to a, you know, uh, to a corpse, um, that might be just sort of overwhelming your methodical thinking processes. hundred, Yeah, 100%. Okay, so then before we hit yeah. uh, 10 o'clock, well, let's get some dice rolling so we can make use of some of those uh, <laughs> points. <Good>. So <laughs> first thing is, why doesn't everyone give us an athletics check? This is for you keeping yourself above. It is a DC 20 in fast Jeez. moving. This is one of those rare things that yeah. has a flat DC as opposed to something that is linked wow. to your score. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That. Do so, I need to? Because I'm presumably at the tree, right? Here are points. Well, the thing is, you oh. need, like you need to breathe still, though, unless you've some developed some way oh, okay. of yeah. You're, you're not going to drift downstream, I didn't get but 20. You, yeah. Okay. I now didn't let me it. tell you what happens with because with a fail it doesn't mean you're you're uh, you're drowning. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Mm. It's a lot. Holy cow. <laughs> Anything with the word failure, freezing cold water, fast moving current, all of those things I don't want to be involved with. So <laughs> I'm happy to spend that. So. <laughs> no one's going to me. Look at that, Trog. Nice. Look at that. The only way I can uh, even succeed is he floats. You turn yourself on, you're like, oh my god, I can't swim, I can't. And you go in and your head just bobs like, oh. Yeah. Hey. No, he's just swimming as hard as he can to keep watching the fire. <laughs> wow. Oh, nice, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at our results here. Nobody got a critical failure, so that's great. Uh, See, so that's no what I would have had. That's why well, I was I to... willing to spend here. Yeah, point. I had to hero point to get out. Okay, well then that's uh, good. All right, so those of you who failed, uh, you you are now fatigued. Uh, so you are just, uh, and I think Vaz for you, you are one of the stronger, tougher. Uh, members of the party. I think it's because you're helping other folks out and you're kind of keeping your hand on that rope the whole time um, that and keeping some control over it because I guess once you get in there and the, the current starts taking, you realize that it's going all, you know, all over the place. And what you're picturing is that rope getting caught on something and then being, you know, worn back and forth across it and the rope getting uh, worn down over time. So you got yourself really tight on it and that's, I imagine, why you just exhausted yourself here. Uh, the next thing I need is, since Vaz, you are the one who um, uh, who made the who tied the rope. Give us a flat number. Um, this is a DC two. You just need to not roll the one, and the rope will not break. So flat D twenty. There you go. The rope is intact. So this is an hour that you guys are out there. Uh, Trog, um, tell us what you're, what you're, uh, what everyone else is experiencing as this choking fire reaches all the way down to this thing and almost deafening the roar of this hungry flame that goes from as far as you can see on either side of the bank. Yeah, it's probably extremely scary. I mean, probably the scariest thing you've ever been near because. <clears throat> you're, I mean, you're struggling to swim, <clears throat> excuse me, but also just the, the sight of the wood going up and how hot it is on your face, even though it's constantly being splashed by cold water. Yeah. would be immense. Yeah. Trog probably has a big smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Those who look over at Trog, it's difficult to tell whether the fire is reflected in his eyes or coming from within them. <laughs> <laughs> So first hour of the firestorm, let's let's uh, shift the blame off of our weatherman here because this is a regular manifestation. Jamie, let's oh, see great. if the fire persists. <laughs> uh, so this uh, for this one, it will be a DC 15, one five. This is a flat. Flat D, yep, uh, flat number. So uh, flat or flat uh, D20. <sighs> Oh. You can spend a hero point if you choose. Yes, let's try that. Okay. Awesome. Let's see here. Yes. Yeah, there we go. It burns out after an hour. <sighs> oh, what do you guys intend on doing next? Getting warm. 
but we're going to want to get to the shore <laughs> as well. Yeah. This will yeah. be easier, though. Yeah. This is just dragging yourself in there. This is going to be an athletics... Um, let's see here. Uh, with the rope, this will just be a, 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 a 13. Now, let me, before anyone rolls, you can choose mm -hmm. to have one person go in first and then aid someone else to bring them in. So if That's you want great. people who are strongest to get on shore first, you can certainly do that. That would be great. Yeah, I could try and do that. Okay, so uh, Vaz, give us an athletics check. Uh, come on. Oh, that's no good. No, no, it was 13. Yeah, it was 13. Okay, 13. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So good. you managed to get yourself to the shore. And oh, God, like your, your uh, arms are just like rubber as soon as you get out of that water and you can't feel your legs. Uh, but now that you are ashore, who is coming next? And then, Vaz, you're going to roll uh, an aid. I'm almost pretty strong. He could try to get over there. Okay. So, uh, Vaz, why don't you give us their lovely legs, too? <laughs> She's flexing them. <laughs> God, my legs are so cold, guys. Look. <laughs> a little lat for you. I don't know if it's a lat. I don't think I see it even on your leg. No, the lats are under your arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially since the pandemic began. Don't really pray at the Iron Gym all that much. So, <laughs> uh, Then, uh, Vaz, would you give us uh, an assist check with the athletics, please? Let's see if you can help Brommel out. You're not helping, but you're not hurting. Bromo, go ahead and give us an athletics check. DC 13. Oh. You want to hear a point that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Then everyone gets a hero point. Yes. Okay, right. there you go. All right, so you, Bromo and Vaz are on shore next. Both of them can help. Who would like to go next? Remy can get up there. He'll be able to help okay. people too. Uh, well, so, so. then uh, Vaz and Bromo each give us an athletics check. Okay. Oh, Swinging it up myself. Tired out. Okay. Remy is ashore as well. Now nice. Remy, Vaz, and Brommel can help the others. Who would like to go next? Sure. Okay. Sure, so Remy, Vaz, and Brommel give us a uh, athletics roll. Ooh. Ah, there now you go. We're back in the mood. There yeah, we there go. We so it's that. plus two, um, but that is a crit fail from Brommel. So it's a net plus one. <laughs> We're almost pulling funny. the other way. You're like, no, buddy, come on. Um, <laughs> so go ahead, Shara. Yeah, Shara, no problem. Shara is ashore as well. Nice. Then it is Drawinius and Trog. Uh, who would like to go next? <laughs> Trog can try. Trog can try. So All hold right. on. Before you roll, uh, the four who are ashore. Go ahead and make your roll. Really sounds hey. like I'm working oh, on the Christmas this. song. Oh, okay, so what? <laughs> Oh, Not 20. Oh. So we got Jeez. one, two, nice. three, sure four. Just rips me out of the water. So Trog, you get plus three to your roll. Net. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Are you up, are you up with that? <laughs> I guess so. You guys pull him in, he's just <laughs> right below the water. Oh shit. Poor <laughs> Jeff. Oh my god. Jeff, oh, you've really got to start paying roll 20 more. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Wow. There you go. Beautiful. Nice. Everyone is a short. Whoever, before Drawinius makes his roll. Uh, everyone, oh, everyone's a short other than Drawinius. Everyone who is a short, go ahead and give us an athletics check. Let's see what Drawinius gets. Okay, so one t plus two. Mm. Pretty good. No, no crit failures. Not yet. Oh, it says, yeah, there's four of you on Or then uh, Trog, are you going to help? <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I can try. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, there you go. It's not oh, a crit fail. Not a foul. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, Drawinis, you get plus two to your uh, athletics check. All right. Here we go. Ooh. And you are all nice. ashore. All right. Uh, so Remy, this. Remy falls on his back and is like, ah, oh, because he's fatigued. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, so this, it is about, um, it was about 10 o'clock when this, when the first thing, when you first noticed it, it was an hour or so to get to the shore. It was an hour that it was burning. So it's only a little past noon right now, but charred everywhere you can see left and right, uh, all the way north. What I are you guys I would like seeing? to just take one moment to inspect the burned ground, um, to see if, for any reason, there's some kind of magic involved in this crazy firestorm. Okay. 
Um, sure, uh, give us so, an Arcana check, please. Actually, hold on. You know what? Here, let's break in the old. Uh, for those listening at home, uh, the very, very fine folks at uh, the SOS Children's Villages International, the charity that uh, benefits our fundraising activity, they came by uh, my hometown uh, or my town I live in, I should say, uh, and <laughs> they very kindly gifted me with a homemade dice tower. Uh, oh, that wow. uh, one of the directors, uh, their their husband makes these, uh, and I, I don't have his name yet, but I will share it once I get it. But this will be our first roll with a dice tower that we'll be using for this campaign. Nice. So, let me make the roll. What is your arcana bonus? This is a secret. It is roll. a seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Go down and uh, do you, do you active like do you cast detect magic as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I'm, it's a canter. So I think I get down, I like kneel down into the dirt and like run my hands through it and pick it up and smell it and taste it and and uh, and then I also cast detect magic. Okay, to use so my sixth sense. first spell being cast in the campaign. What does your spell mm. look like? Uh, I think it creates this sort of like uh, uh, uh kind of cone uh, of uh, warped light. Okay. Like heat shimmer kind of thing um, that I can that I see okay. um, that kind of goes over everything that I'm looking at in that direction and um, anything that uh, it it sets upon that does have some kind of magical aspect to it um, kind of glows um, in uh, you know starts out by just glowing like um, sort of golden light but if if I had the opportunity for uh, it to know to know the school because that's only in certain circumstances it would change color to reflect what school okay. would be. So you're you're viewing this in uh, thank you for that uh, if, for you yeah. for viewing this in, in that way. There doesn't appear to be anything unnatural about this. Okay, and I just I, I do you know spend you a see, moment. You know, there, doing hold on. There's one strange thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see it looks like a man in some kind of blue tunic. He might be a um, blacksmith of some kind because he's working with chainmail, and there is a mm -hmm. dice that appears to be cursed sitting near him. <laughs> so I've used all three actions to beat a dead horse at this point about Dave's uh... <laughs> uh, yeah uh, I have you know what I think I actually have a, 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 a quick vision of this as like uh, part of my fortune telling and I don't know what it means or when it will come up but somehow I gotta be on the lookout I for this individual. That fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, don't worry, it'll happen again. So this is uh, you guys still have could do another four uh, like four hours of travel, which would uh, get you through the um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, there it is. I'm nice. a happy owner of the uh, you know mastery that you possess, Dave. So yeah. uh, oh, and look there's these the chainmail dice bags are all yes. over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so with uh, all of you out, there does appear to be a few of you who have been fairly exhausted by this experience. Uh, you mm -hmm. could still travel for another four uh, four hours if you choose. Remy, uh, Remy, he sits up and says, well, you know, if we stay here, the odds of this place catching fire again are zero. But we should move on. Don't say that. <laughs> It can't burn twice. <laughs> Somehow it can. <laughs> the, the, the dice do not favor us, but uh, narratively, yes. Do you want me to test that theory with roll 20? I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, what are we thinking? Do, do, do you not, do, 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 we, do we not wish to continue onward? We, we're, we're going to stop here? We, we should continue. <laughs> Yeah, surely, uh, yes, being uh, very tired, good. surely being a little tired isn't going to stop you all from your quest, is it? No. no. But I, 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 I've seen it. It's dangerous in these, uh, in these environments. I, I'm going to uh, cast a little bit of magic. Give me one moment, and I'm going to cast a mage armor on myself because it lasts for 24 hours. Okay. Mm. What's your mage armor look like? Um. I think it looks like um, 
it looks like the matrix effect with the like silver mercury that runs up his body and then goes into his mouth but this time it just covers me entirely and then it disappears okay that's the creepiest thing i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> i then, do not know what you mean uh the next uh four hours of travel guys are uneventful And when, uh, let's see here. Uh, once you complete that, now do you wish to, this will bring you to the edge uh, or to the, um, through that one hex, that first hex where the wagon is. You guys are fatigued already. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that you're not gonna wanna force march to Novactus Crossing. No, Trog is not interested in a force march. You will have to bribe him if you want him to. Okay. <laughs> so then let's talk camping. And let's see here. We're heading back to the old. Uh, for those listening at home, too, the weather rules are uh, out of the Kingmaker Companion uh, guide. So if you are interested in keeping those in your own PF2 games or in your own Kingmaker campaign, camping is also out of that book. So. First thing you need to do is, man, this game, this is put together in such a great way for easy use. Like I opened it up to the camping rules and they've got all the zones with the difficulty uh, classes marked on it. Fucking awesome. Um, yeah, I'm very well done. So preparing a campsite requires two hours searching the hex for a safe and secure location to make a camp. It seems like a really nice place with a slightly charred skeleton and a burned scourge. Uh, that seems At least promising. Starting a fire will be easy tonight. <laughs> yeah, rubbing <laughs> leg bones together. Come on. Um, so then, who would like to uh, give us the prepare campsite roll? This is a survival roll, and people can assist with this here. The difficulty class is going to be a 14, a 1-4. I'm no good at um, survival. I have survival, but I am fatigued, which means I'm I taking can a penalty. Do it. I'll give it a go. Okay. I'm not fatigued, and I'm not. Okay. Ooh, but you that would... Hero point that? That's not... I might just do that. Okay. There, there you we go. go. So on a success, you find a serviceable spot for camp uh, for and for camping activities. So then we move on to step two, uh, the camping activities. Now, I think, I think, I think, I think uh, I put, no, I did not. Hold on. Did I forget to bring this in. Let me go to the old transmogrifier here, guys. Let me see if I can bring in uh, the handout so you guys can follow along. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's see here. Uh, here we go, Kingmaker template. Hmm. Sorry guys, I thought that I had done this before. Aha, here we go. Let me see, let me see. Yes! All right, guys, check this out. There are camping activities. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, and campsites. Here we are. So, looking at, uh, for the watches and rest, you guys have six. That means uh, total time will be nine hours and 36 minutes, with each watch lasting one hour and 36 minutes. Uh, for camping activities, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. once the PCs pre uh, finish preparing their campsite, they can simply head to bed immediately, consuming rations and skipping straight to step three, which is eating, uh, or you can take camping activities. Uh, 
these activities can help to bolster them for the coming day, strengthen their campsite against potential attacks, build bonds between them or their NPC companions, which you don't have yet, allow them to time to craft in the wild, and so on. Uh, so kinds of activities uh, are things like cooking a basic meal on a success you gain plus one status bonus to all saving throws until they complete their daily preparations or begin adventuring again. So if anyone is feeling that would be a, uh, let's see here, a DC 18 cooking lore or a DC 22 survival check. Uh, you expend two basic ingredients. Oh, uh, yeah, so this in involves the ingredients rules that are in here that I don't remember offhand. Uh, you can hunt and gather, spend two hours gathering ingredients. Uh, oh, in which case you get basic ingredients or special ingredients. You can learn, oh, no, no companions yet. You can organize the watch. This does require expert in perception, so there's only some of you guys who can do that. On a success, it is a... DC equal to the zone, so it'll be a DC 14 perception check. On a success, characters gain a plus one status bonus to perception checks made during their shift on watch. Um, provide aid, spend two hours to help someone else in their camping activities. Relax, spend two hours listening to camp stories, chatting, reading, meditating, napping, or otherwise relaxing. You gain plus one circumstance bonus to the next check you make in order to resolve a camping activity, provided that it happens during this session. You can tell a campfire story, spend two hours telling a rousing story, perhaps one of your previous adventures, um, and then you make a performance check against a DC set by your level. On a success, you inspire your allies, um, granting a plus one bonus to attack rolls, saving throws, and skill checks during combat at the campsite. Now, as far as how many activities you can take, let's see here. Um, camping activities are undertaken by a single PC and each takes two hours to compare. So you probably have four hours to kill. So you can probably each do two, um, two activities and you can choose to sort of uh, synergize if someone wants to grant a bonus to someone else. So, yeah, uh, the ones that are likely provide aid, relaxing. Uh, relaxing would just grant you a plus one to your next activity, so if you do that for one and then do something else afterwards, you can hunt, try and grab ingredients. Right now, all you've got is, is ration, so I don't think you can do that basic cooking thing yet. Uh, an organizing watch is getting yourself, for those who have expert uh, perception, you can get yourself a, a bonus to your um, initiative role in, uh, if you're keeping watch. So, what do you guys think? What about camouflaging the campsite? Ooh, where is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first one. Madison, you need to be trained in stealth to do this. Attempt a stealth check against uh, the camp zone DC. On a success, uh, you... Increase the encounter DC for your camp by one. What that means is that when I roll for a random encounter, it becomes one harder for it to actually happen. Mm. Mm hmm. Like, for instance, in this, it's got a, a flat DC of uh, 12. I roll a dice, and if I roll 12 or higher, there's a random encounter. And I roll twice over the course. For your watch, I'll actually roll three times. Because it takes nine I and a half. Help, I could help uh, Kim Fletcher. Kim, say. Okay. Say. Okay. I remember you. Drog would definitely have a campfire story to tell. Okay. Okay. Uh, so remember, you guys can each take two. You'll have four hours to kill before uh, bed here. That uh, campfire story, the performance one. Uh, uh, that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, Are you I could... trained in that? Oh yeah, I'm a bard. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, just that it says if you have a relevant story to recent circumstances. I'm sure Trog would have stories about times where he had lit in, you know, a little part of the forest on fire, maybe not quite as major as what we just saw. So might uh, I suggest this then, is why don't, uh, for one of Trog's two actions, why don't you aid, provide aid to Remy or the reverse? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because Remy could, uh, well, uh, depending on what well, you get pictures, maybe Trog starts telling a story and Remy starts plucking his, I don't know, whatever, lute or whatever his musical instrument is. Yeah, what do you have? Um, he's actually uh, a vocalist. He, he, he sings. 
Oh. <laughs> so he's that annoying guy who's repeating what you just said, but in song. Well, or maybe he's got oh. relevant songs. I mean, it's a two hour campfire story. So like that. he might have relevant songs that he's interspersing into the story. Or sudden, uh, you know, sound effects. Let's see here. My last <laughs> uh, year in review thing was four hours long. I don't think it's as hard to fill up two hours as you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's you, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a little Bart. <laughs> yeah. I could assist him with the performance, and then I could try to arrange the ro- watch. I'm an expert in perception. Okay. So yeah. that's... I'm an expert, expert in perception as well. I can also help with the watch. Okay, so you can do... count Because remember, that benefits your own, own character for the... Uh, array, uh, whatever, the watch thing. Organize a watch. So then you're doing those two things. Trog, uh, what, are, uh, what actions do you want to take? You said provide aid for one. What, what would you like for your second one? Uh, and then what you can do as well is you could combine like relax. Relax just gives you plus one mm-hmm. to the roll. So you could relax first, then do your provide aid. Oh yeah, I probably would because I am fatigued. So okay. I could definitely see him relaxing first. Uh, Bromel and uh, Vaz, what are you guys thinking? Guess I'll relax and then get some uh, get ready for watch. Okay. And yeah, Bram- that's that's what Bramo was gonna do as well. He's just gonna relax first and then do do watch. Uh, is he got expert? Uh, d- does he have expert in um, perception? Yes. Okay, perfect. And then Drawinius, what uh, two campsite actions do you want to take? I mean, I'll definitely do relax. Um, and. Um, I guess there's not a lot of things that are. Uh, if you I have think... anything else you want to suggest, like there's, they suggest crafting. So like, and a lot of other downtime stuff can uh, be taken care of for that, or can be taken uh, yeah. during that time. Do you have any fortune telling stuff that you can do? Uh, it's not gamified. Um, I know other than I have the fortune telling lore skill, um, but I think I would just. Um, what is the name of the anyway? fortune telling of finding like stuff in ashes? Oh, um, there's a hmm. name for it, I'm sure. Because I know there there's is like, a name for it. What is yeah. it? Harrispax is like the one like of, reading the tea leaves. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, it's cutting um, fish, isn't it? Yes, I'm quickly googling. Um, I want to point so, out how, how, spot-a-mancy. how much uh, Anna is in your corner here, guys. Anna is asleep in the corner. I can hear the snow removal guys outside, and she is not going to bark. She is in your corner here. <laughs> it also helps that I bundled up and put down our old comforter in the corner, so she's like basically <laughs> sinking into it. Loving it. Um, uh, spot-a-mancy seems to be... It's, uh, oh, cool. It's, it's, yeah. Or a divination by examining cinders or ashes. So, do you think there's a way you could use that to aid someone else's role? Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, uh, I would be happy to do. The, are there other are roles that are going to be made still? Yeah, there's at least uh, three okay. or four people who are going to be oh, keeping great. watch. I uh, wasn't, I wasn't sure how where I missed what I missed. So, no, I'm no sorry about rules that. Yet. He's, he's, he's. It's nine twenty-two p.m. my time. He should have been asleep two hours ago. Um, <laughs> and, he, and he wanted like the most random things uh, um, and he probably won't go to sleep for three more hours but anyway yeah. um, so so I'm gonna yeah so I'm gonna relax and provide aid okay so um, then so I'll um, get a plus one you guys now all have heard what everyone's doing uh, for the people who are, who are um, uh, aiding uh, who are you planning on aiding I'll help Remy I think Okay. Well, think, I'm like very logical and stuff and easy organizing things. So Trog, uh, I, might be actually, able to, I think yeah. Trog is already assisting Remy. You, I mean, more, oh, than sorry. One, okay. one, more than one person can, but Trog's helping out Remy with his his story he's telling. Yeah, Dor- gotcha. Dorinius can help me with the organizing the watch. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm okay. going to kind of, the signs point to this is the direction that we would be attacked from if okay. it does happen. So then for both uh, Trog and uh, Drowinius, why don't you give us, uh, you the fortune-telling lore, Drowinius, and then Trog, okay. um, get a performance. And it's a DC 20 you're rolling against. Okay. Uh, where 
Where's my... It's usually the bottom, lore. the, the lore rules. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it says the word lore, but it does not have... Oh, did I not put it in? My, that's okay. I can, I can... The yeah, only thing with the lore, out. there is that's a right. uh, programming issue with it. You have to yeah, select a different uh, stat. Oh, here we go. So wait, let me add it in for you. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Telling just lore. It. Uh, it's trained. trained. Yeah. And then we have to basically sw switch it to a different stat and then switch it back to intelligence. Oh, yeah. I don't know why it does okay. that, but that's just, it's a known problem. <laughs> and I just, you got to work around it. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, hero point that? I'm going to, yes, I do. <laughs> okay. And Trog, you want to hero point that? Um, no. Let me move you back where you can see your tokens, too. At least I didn't film. Yeah. He's tired. Jamie, are you, are you still I... there? We, we lost your. Ah, He's camping. here. I can hear you. Okay, yeah, we just lost your uh, camera. I'll, um, I'll refresh. We do see a giant uh, lizard folk, but that's... Uh, <laughs> his <laughs> mouth doesn't cool. move yet. We have it crudely <laughs> animated, so it goes... Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> um, Trog, you want to hero point that? Or are you sitting your last hero point? Uh, no, I no. I don't have a great chance. Yeah, so I'm going to roll the dice save the on. last one just in case something real bad happens in the last 20 minutes. I mean, what do you think is going to be another... Uh, force fire. I got everyone back now. If you guys want to refresh, you can do that. what you have planned, Kevin. I've got everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um, so you're not going to get any bonus, Remy. Um, uh, is there any... Yeah. Let's let's have anyone who's not uh, getting the watch ready make their rolls. So I think maybe that's only Remy. Okay. Okay, this is your performance, your campfire story, and this is mm -hmm. against your level, so I think it's a 14. Okay, I'm going to try to... Uh, spin Trog's assistant with like starting his fire stories with us heroically surviving our first fire encounter and then bellish it up for our future tales. 15, one five. I'll hero point that. Heck yeah. Because I have three. There we nice. Go. Okay. So then, um, do the stealth check for the camouflaging of our base? Yes, which is a skill check, but because of this badass story that uh, Remy just told you, you're going to get plus one to that roll. Everyone gets a plus one on uh, attacks, saving throws, and skill checks during combat at this campsite. That's awesome. The way to go, Remy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is only a 14. Does that include the plus one? That includes the plus one. Uh, what would you, you like? Your points you're sitting on? Your point that. I'm sitting on three hero points. So it's... Nice. Okay. We roll. There we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we think I think I'm doing a fantastic job on this. I really do. Yeah. Like I agree with the uh, terrain you've put up here, and I agree with the um, uh, the way that you've placed the uh, fallen log over there. I question your giant white flag holding above <laughs> the camp. Maybe we'll take that down. No, yeah, man. Well, that's kind of cool. It's distracting now, it them, black, right? If it was a black flag, that would be timely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, um, a failure doesn't do anything. Uh, it's only crit failure where you're uh, affecting it. So you're not uh, making things worse. Uh, we then, I think, the last thing we have is everyone keeping watch. So... Remy, Vaz, and Bromel, uh, or Bromel, uh, this is a perception check, I believe, against a 14. Are we going to organize the watch? Yeah, yeah, that was one of my actions. Oof, so Remy... I'm going to hero point that, because I'm yeah. sitting on a bunch of them. Okay, there you go, success for Vaz. Uh, actually, crit success for Vaz, which means... There we go. Got a success. Oh, hold up. Uh, so Organized Watch is actually only one person. Uh, only one person needs to do it. And the best one you got was Vaz doing a critical success. Uh, Madam Future General, treat the total time required for rest as if the party size were one more and all characters gain plus two bonus to their perception checks made during their shift on watch. Cool. So Vaz has had a extremely detailed plan for how to keep everyone safe out here. Well done, Vax. 
I'll go put nice. the tanks over here. I'll go and put the infantry over yeah, here. That's <laughs> Perfectly. So less attitude about the war gamers, eh? <laughs> yeah, we only do that because of the camouflage that we fly. Yeah, and there are no more flowers to smell, so, you know. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, that we go down to eating. Uh, everyone kindly cross off. I love that they included that as a step, not only because of the fun camping rules, but the reminder to take off <laughs> rations once a day. That's a helpful yeah. thing. Um, so everyone cross off one ration uh, from their list, please. No one has create food, I take it. That's a higher level spell, I isn't it? That. It's like a second level. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Then it is time to rest. You don't have to listen to people complaining about Klingadin's food today. All right. <laughs> now, um, what is... There are six of you who will be catching, uh, keeping watch here, guys. I have a lovely Starfinder branded six-sided dice I'm going to send tumbling down my tower in a moment here. Um, what... Uh, what or do, I, do you want me to just use the order I've got you guys on the screen here? Uh, Remius, uh, or Ramirius, Vaz, Bromel... Brommel, uh, Drawinius, Trog, and then Shara. I can't see in the dark anyway, so since yeah. the last is fine with me. Okay. So then we've got it here. Let's see what happens. Okay. You know what's something that's really clever about this design? There's little ribs in it that go along so your dice tumbles. It's guaranteed to, it's not just going to slide down. Man, it's great stuff. All right. Drawinius. Okay. It is dark. <clears throat> would you give us... <laughs> would you give us a... Let's see here. <laughs> give us a hero point. Oh, yeah, of it's course it's the one with no hero points. <laughs> but give us a hero point, exactly. you cheap bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm just checking to see. Uh, let's see here. And just FYI, what I did on my sheet for everybody else, I don't know if it, you had a different way of doing it, but I, for ra tracking rations, it, because it's, you know, come, when you stick in your inventory, it's for one week at a time. So if you, you know, you can't tick off one day. I just made a rations tracker as an item and yeah. just put you know, 21, because I had three weeks oh, worth, so then I could take it down to 20. I, I went in and edited mine and changed it to days and changed it from two weeks to 14, and then back. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. nice, yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Excellent. All right, so then, um, Drawinius, would you kind of give us an, um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, perception check, please. And you get plus one because of uh, Vaz's clean in, or clear instructions as to how to prepare yourself for this. Nat 20, baby. Nat 20. Okay, so. I do learn quickly. Draw winners. So listen to what he told me to do. So we got the, the sort of like, not terribly effective camouflage that uh, Shara has set up, but not distracting around you guys. I mean, she had very, in fairness to her, she had very little to work with, with all the fucking burn <laughs> stuff. Although I think you guys are out with another four hours of travel. You're outside of the, like the range of the, uh, of the fire. Building your online business. Uh, who's building their online business? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, someone is trying to get a level of mm -hmm. entrepreneur while we play. <laughs> well, I to, exactly. I'm like, oh, I haven't even checked on the chat today. I better get in there, and, and then I forgot to my. Uh... Oh, the ad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching ads right now, Kevin. I'm, I'm making us some money on the. On the and that's, <laughs> is it for an industrial mass spectrometer? Mm -hmm. I've been waiting for my my yeah. next ad for that. Okay, um, so, um, Drawinius, what you um, yeah. find, over oh, in the last half hour of the session, why doesn't everyone take a hero point? Mm. Yes, okay, that's awesome. Uh, so then, right. as you are, uh, tell, so Drawinius, this has been, <laughs> if you can believe it, this has been your first day out, and you have nearly died from both fire and water. Yes. Um, being an evoker, uh, I feel like um, 
somehow I have, I'm a beacon for these things, uh, and they seek me out. Um, and I'm trying to parse, uh, what this means from a fortune telling point of view, from a science and portents point of view, uh, as to whether I have made a mistake in my chosen, uh, school. Um, and, uh, and like, I'm literally thinking the most esoteric things that are not about what we're supposed to be doing at the moment and like getting this, finding the hungry sword and doing all of those, those things. I'm sort of my mind just like chaotically moves from one topic to another. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, but what I look around at my sleeping companions and the one feeling that I have. So mostly in my mind is just thoughts, it's just constantly spinning thoughts. And I kind of ignore the feelings part of it. But the one feeling I have is um, one of safety mm. because I survived those things and I only survived it because of these people who I've just met. And for some reason, they've chosen to give aid to each other and, and me. And I am not used to this sort of thing. At what point does your mind go to your lost friend? And do you have any keepsake of his or hers or theirs? Uh, yeah, so he, uh, he, um, uh, uh, he had given me uh, a, a kind of a, a bracelet with charms on it that I've always worn. Um, and I think once my mind, my, or more I feel this like uh, connection with these companions here, that's what reminds me of like, oh, this is why I'm here. And I kind of pull back my sleeve and there's the bracelet with charms in it. And the weird thing is one of the charms is missing. Mm. I have never seen that before. But I know what it means. Like so, I gotta find that charm, which is my friend. So you're you're looking at that, and then because you're nat twenty on this too, you can picture the um, the amount of soot that you're blowing out of your nose that you're you know hawking up hours after having traveled through that and lived through that experience of the forest fire. Um, it's almost like being a coal miner, right? Of just like you know cleaning that stuff out. Uh, and even as you mm -hmm. were traveling through the the terrain here, it it, um, it seems still that there's that heavy scent of fire. And that's why it's so curious that there is just a, in contrast, almost pungent uh, in its uh, in its uh, severity. Smell of flowers. And as soon as you mm -hmm. stop and think, there is drifting from behind you. There are small petals that drift and land on you, soft, almost like so delicate that they they almost uh, break or or like come apart, like um, uh, like melting snow when you touch them. Mm. But there's is this there a breeze of any kind? That's you look back, and. Uh, the the moon is out is um, oh, I can't wait to have our calendar so I can have the moon cycles on it. It's great. Um, so when uh, when you look back in the cool you know spring night, it's still like you can see a little further away from from where the the illumination of the campfire goes, but not much further. And you certainly can't make out detail in it. It's all washed out in that pale blue light. But what you see is a willowy young woman and I mean willowy in a double entendre means because she is both quite thin and uh, like almost unnaturally lithe but she also has the skin uh, that seems to be fine bark and around her head there is a gently swirling somehow like um delicately held aloft by an unseen wind and somehow impossibly remaining in a sim simple, a single orbit, there are petals of flowers drifting around. And those seem to be slowly one or two drifting away from her. She's probably about maybe 80 or 90 feet away from me at this point. Mm -hmm. And she seems to be her white um, skin or bark or both uh, seems to reflect that little bit of moonlight quite well. And you think you might even hear some soft singing. Though, mm -hmm. what languages do you speak again? Uh, let's see. First um, page underneath, uh, just above um, perception, I think. Uh, 
very bottom right of the page. Uh, yeah, here we go. Common, Draconic, Dwarven, Elven, Goblin, Orcish. Okay. A language that okay. is unfamiliar to your ears. Okay. Uh, you can, I think, give us a nature check if you like. Right. There it comes. Whether you're trained or not. 22. I, I am trained, actually. Interesting. It may be the... It may be the language of the inhabitants of the inhabitants of the first world. That primordial mm -hmm. realm uh, from which the fairy and other primal uh, creatures of magic spring. What do you do? Uh, I think I have read about this and never encountered it in any way. So this is sort of a unique experience I'm having. And in a way, I'm drawn to it because I'm such an academic. I need to know everything. Yeah. But uh, you also, uh, uh, this only occurred, and this is it, the moment that you noticed that charm was missing and you made the connection to your friend. That's when you first made this. Your character being as perceptive and whatnot as, as he is would likely put yep. that together. I start, yeah, I start connecting these dots. And... I start moving toward her because I feel like there's because of this connection. Okay. Um, and then I oh go ahead. So this let me see while while you get up and start moving, Remy Vaz mm -hmm. Bromel uh, Bromel. Why do I keep wanting to pronounce your name funny? It's it's like uh, my my um, uh, my sister's ex husband was from the UK and he always used to call it Arkansas because he didn't believe. <laughs> and it was he's like no, it's Kansas and Arkansas. You're just trying to make me say it wrong. <laughs> um, so, uh, Remy, Vaz, uh, Bromel, um, Trog, and Shara each give us a perception check. On a crit, you'll wake up as you hear uh, Drawinius get up and, and moving around. I think all of you have good reason to be sleeping lightly uh, this evening. Mm. Bromel, the good pretty good one. Yep. I'm going to hear a point mine. I don't want to... Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't want to... Check. Check. I'm picturing uh -huh. his trog sleeping yeah. there and he's like... <gasps> in and then out and there's a little puff of fire. Well, I'm not going to hear a point it because I see what happens if you do, so... Yeah, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I hear a point and I guess there's Bromel snorting's thing. I was like, oh, we'll just back to sleep. <laughs> uh, so, trog, Remy, so the only one who actually stirs is uh, Bromel. And, Bromel, your, your eyes sort of splits open and you can see that Drawinius has, and tell us if I've got this wrong, but it sounds like you sort of, like your your head is looking away from where the the campsite is and you sort of get up as if like you're trying to get a better view of something. Exactly. So you see uh -huh. that, Bromel, from where you're, where you're lying. And you also can smell that strange floral odor that hangs in the air. Rommel might uh, utter to Drawinius, um, don't be wandering off by yourself, wizard. Now, you need not make a voice for it, but what do you think Brommel's voice sounds like? Uh, I think it's like a raspy voice, uh, pretty raspy hmm? sounding voice, uh, regular pitch, but just very raspy in its sound. Okay. So you right, hear so this I, almost hissing yeah. sound from, from beneath, and, and uh, that draws your attention back. So I, I stop and turn around, turn back around, and and see that it's him. And you go, ah, ah, but this, but see, this, this is important. This is important. So mm. we need to investigate. At is that that can, point? Do you want to come with me? Yeah. Uh, Vax, your eyes snap open. They're talking in camp, and you rolled well enough in your perception. So you can hear the uh, Drawinius is hunched yes. over, and I think the last thing you heard, or the the thing that, that you hears as the fog clears from waking up, Drawinius says something in a very fevered tone of "We must investigate." <laughs> See, I think uh, Brahma will uh, argue that uh, the patterns will be more visible in the daylight. He's taken aback by that for a second. Uh, someone who under you understand you understand. Oh, that is perhaps true. I can, but I can create light out of thin air. Uh, ah, yes, that maybe that is the plan. Perhaps we should get. Cl Do you see that? So, Vaz, there seems to be something going on, and from what you recall, no one drank any alcohol last night. Yeah. <laughs> 
What are you lot up to? So. <laughs> uh, it, uh, uh, look, uh, just look, look there. Can you see? Look. And if you point over uh, both look. Bromel uh, and um, Vaz, you both see Bromel. Why the fuck am I keep saying it wrong? Bromel and Vaz both see exactly what I described to Drawinius. And Vaz likewise too. There is this floral scent of like fresh petals that just fills your, your nostrils. I think it is a good a good omen. Could maybe help us. Maybe it's come to deliver uh, some secret knowledge. Does the smell um, seem familiar at all to us? Something that we could place? Uh, if you are, um, hmm, I think Vaz and uh, Brahm will give us a nature check each, please. Nature. At 20. Uh, so Vaz, whew, um, we'll have to talk about it uh, as far as what this experience was, but you most assuredly have had a very, uh, you have to at the very least know what the scent of the flowers in the first world smell like. You can, you have a firsthand, uh, at the very least, uh, a sense memory of what the gardens of the fairies smells like. And that is precisely what you smell right now. I think that uh, fairies in the, in the, uh, in Golarian uh, are even the ones that are, you might consider benevolent or even like closely benevolent are closer to that like kind of, um, the, um, I think like more of like a uh, Scandinavian tradition where they're like, they can mm. be beneficial, but it's more a matter of like appeasing even the friendly ones and avoiding the dangerous ones. The f dabbling in the first world, if you are mortal, is nothing but dangerous. So you would recognize that scent right I'll away. I'll be like, fairies, beware. And I'll be reaching for my sheath sword. Okay. Uh, reach over. Uh, should, should we? Should, uh, ah, yes. Uh, wake the others. Ah, uh, that is. Yes, we should wake the others. Bra uh, Brommel, where did you go? Yeah. I don't know if you guys. If you looked away for a moment and looked, she she's not standing where she was a moment ago. Vaz is able mm -hmm. to get her sword and, and uh, get up. It sounds like that's what you were going to do, right? Yeah, so, okay. exactly. So you get up, and Drawinius, when you do, and you're kind of panicked, you know, looking back and forth and whatnot, you look over, and she's gone. The smell of flowers is like, is fading as well. Um, I start moving in that in that direction where she, I had seen her, um, just to see if maybe she just went a little bit farther, and I can't it's see. Pretty I'm dark. human. I can't There's see There's a lot of shit her. to stumble over. Do you want to create a light i would like to ca yes i do i'd like to cast a uh light cantrip okay so you speak and then yeah unfortunately you know, both <laughs> remy and trog are going to sleep through all of this when you cast that <laughs> spell that is when uh shara wakes up as well and drovinius goes stumbling off in that direction brommel or vaz are you guys doing anything well, I'll get up to the edge of the camp so with my night vision, I can see him blundering around in the dark. So yeah. I'll keep an eye on what he's up to. Okay, so Drowinius is stumbling forward, his, his light over his head. Shara, you've just woken up and you're looking around. Vaz has uh, her sheathed sword in her hand. She's standing in on the edge of the camp. What is Brommel doing at this point? Brommel's going to wake Remy and Trog. <laughs> It takes. It does take a, like one or two. Get, get up! Get up! No, come get up! They're full on teenage boy sleeping right now. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll be speaking of what? It. A bit of cold With... water and the fire goblin should wake up. <laughs> the wizard the has to wake up too. Ugh. And then uh, Shara, what are you doing? Uh, Shara sees Vaz with sword in hand, and even if it's she, the shield do the same to grab her rapier uh, in its sheath and kind of get up to her feet and quickly weave her way through the sleeping bodies. Okay. 
and uh, and Darwinia says, mm -hmm. you race over there. You, you're you're. Is the, I'm I'm acting it like miming it as if it's on the staff. Is that where the light is? Or is it on your hand? Yeah, or is it exactly. On... Yeah, okay. No, it's on the staff, so I can like like this. And, you can just yeah. gand off it up, I believe. I'm gonna gand offing <laughs> it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's this say on the side of the uh, staff here? Supplied by Istari Suppliers. Got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's right. So yeah. you, you make your way over, um, and as as you reach, you're you're able to fairly swiftly, you know, reach where um, where they are. Vaz, you're making sure that he doesn't stumble. Same thing with Shara. Um, he gets there without incident. There's nothing else you can see out there, either Shara or Vaz. But when you reach the point, uh, Drawinius, you're there, and and you can mm -hmm. you're certain this is where she was standing next to. And all mm -hmm. you see on the ground uh, are more fallen petals, and the scent. The scent is almost gone from these, and you pick them up, and you realize in your in the light of your staff that that uh, even uh, though it is magical, I picture it being that kind of lifeless, flat light that doesn't have the richness that like a torch or a campfire might give. So it's it's yeah. easy to see that the color is in fact draining from these petals as you look mm -hmm. at them. But there is a reflection. I there's yeah. a reflection of something on the ground. A piece of metal? Mm hmm I, I shall look closer. It is your missing charm. I pick it up and uh, kind of stand amazed for a moment. Lady of the Flowers, are you still here? Uh, do you have training in crafting? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, crafting. I guess I do. Okay, I so see. You got to get a bit good uh, intelligence, so I know you had a butt ton of skills. Uh, why don't you yeah, give us, exactly. give us a uh, crafting check? This is going to be only DC 10. Okay. 11. So here's the curious thing. Uh, looking at this, uh, what? well, I guess first off, what do you think the charm is? Uh, the charm is of a small soldier holding a sword. Okay. Um... This thing probably had some wearing to it. If it if it had a connection to your yeah. your friend, it probably had some age to it. But yeah, the either the tarnishing, depending on what metal it's made out of, the tarnishing, the corroding, whatever sign it is that gives age to it. This thing seems like hundreds of years older than what it should be. Strange. So, and I like like pause for a moment, and then my next, unless something else happens, I'm going to try to work, make my way back to the camp. Sure. So Shara and Vaz, what you can see is um, that uh, Drowinius seems to have picked up something and is studying it. Because of his light, it, it probably catches at some point, and you can see a reflection of something metallic. Um, and he makes his way back to the camp. Did you take any of the flowers or petals as well? Uh, yeah, I think I took it, unless they crumbled to nothingness, I will... No, they're dry you know, now. Them. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll bring them just in case, because I'm always going to look for, like, maybe there's veins in them that have something I can read or something like sure. that. So, yeah. So, as, tell the others what the expression on Drawinius' face is as he makes his way back towards the camp. Uh, uh, sort of in a state of... Um, confusion and des the desperate need to make sense out of uh of whatever uh, he's just experienced and and while holding this thing and like like almost not even watching where he's going completely and stumbling a bit because he's got his eyes on this little uh reflective um item that you're not quite sure what it is because you've never really seen yeah. this uh, you know, bracelet. Would I be right buyer. in saying that this is the most composed that they have seen Drawinius since they met him? Yeah, he, he's the, when he gets um, when there's confusion, like he kind of goes quiet and um, yeah, he kind of like gets uh, centered in a way because he's all of his resources are being used at the same time to like figure out the question. The so mystery. all of you would be awake at this point. All of you would be up, and you would see that you know Drowini is coming back with this lit staff and focused on this thing, uh, a degree of focus um, that you have not seen from uh, this old wizard as of yet. Uh, what do you guys say or do as he comes back into camp? 
Hermes confused and asked if the, uh, did, did the old guy have a nightmare and he fell asleep on watch? What happened? <laughs> I just started saying, this means something. <laughs> this means I just saw, I, I just saw Close Encounters at the, at the theater <laughs> last week. Um, but, uh, I, I just we keep repeating it as you guys talk. What's up? Why are we awake? Oh. <laughs> it's probably a dream. What did you see, Brahma? Because that it was gone when I got up. I, I don't know. Yeah. He's got, uh, apparently something went through the camp. I saw it. We we smelled it as well. The the smell of the the fairy flowers. Fairy flowers. If you look down, there is a fair amount of flower of uh, petals. Uh, they now faded with uh, from you know the color faded from them. They seem aged uh, more than the fresh off the flower you know uh, look they had initially. And. Remy gets a look like almost identical to Darwinius on his face as he he like kneels down and tries to. You know, examine the flowers. I mean, he knows nothing about them, but hearing the word fairy gets his attention. Uh, so at this point, I'm not even going to let you make a roll just because there's not really much to get drawn from. You don't yeah. have a scent to oh, come I, from not, at this. Not, yeah. Not trying for a roll. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was telling you why you're not going to be making one just because I think there's just yeah. not whatever magic that uh, animated these things, it is uh, he, gone. He learned to speak the Sylvan language uh, when he was younger, so it's like a missed opportunity. He's like, we could have spoken to it. Mm. So. Mm. And I, I, I'm going to quickly, uh, you know, as they, they have their, you know, they're conversing with each other, then I kind of snap out of it after um, maybe Remy said something about, about Sylvan language. Um, says, yes, she would speak. She spoke in a language I did not know. It must have been, must have been of the Fey folk, the Sylvan language. But here's what is strange. I dropped this somewhere along the way since we left. And perhaps it was when we were running from the fire. I do not know, but... I thought I had lost it forever, and the second I thought of it, she appeared, and I reached her. She was gone, but what I found where she was standing was the very thing I had lost, but it wasn't the same. It was changed. It has aged by many, many years, and I hold up, I hold it up uh, next to the spot where it usually would be, and then you can see all the other charms and see the difference in age between them. This means something. What does it mean? That is the question. I do not know. And we'll find out in very strange. <laughs> Anything else? Or in uh, two years. Yeah. <laughs> two years is optimistic. Uh, then, <laughs> for those listening at home, Thank you so much for joining us for our first session of Kingmaker. Uh, so let me move us over here, guys. And we will make Mitt the outro. Um, so uh, for those listening at home, uh, uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, I will all, uh, can also find a link in the description of this video to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, uh, where we have channels dedicated to Pathfinder 2, and we will uh, soon have a channel dedicated to the uh, ongoing Kingmaker game on this channel as well. Um, there is also a ton of other great channels about uh, finding a group and um, just general discussion stuff. There's a, t a terrific community that's built up over there, and you are more than welcome to join us uh, over on that server. Um, in addition, there is a link down below to uh, our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent uh, unionized purveyor of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in North America. Um, not only do they have an outstanding so, uh, selection of new role-playing games, board games, and uh, card games. They also have an unmatched selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs, uh, including the copies of Hunter the Reckoning First Edition that will be showing up at my place on Monday. Um, they have a great feature as well called a want list. Uh, so if you uh, don't have, if they don't have something in stock that you um, uh, you uh, would like to get, you can put it on your want list and they'll send you an email when they get it in stock. Um, in addition, uh, there's also a link down below. Oh, but before I say <laughs> move on, and if you purchase $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code THEMUSE at checkout, which I fucking forgot to do last time. 
So be sure oh, to man. enter the code the Muse, all caps. If you're looking while well, watching this at a later time, come back and check on one of our more recent videos and you'll find whatever the updated uh, discount code is because we change it every, or I mean, the Noble Knight changes it every like four months. So um, yeah, be sure to check back uh, on a more recent video and you'll save yourself 10% uh, on any purchase of $10 or more through their website. Uh, in addition, and there's also a link down below to uh, something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign that we run on the channel. Uh, it benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 uh, orphaned and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts at the time of recording in Ukraine and the surrounding countries. Uh, all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middle Men just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. Um, as a small way of saying thank you, uh, we uh, let's see here. The next charity raffle we will be having for 2023 will be at the end of June. And uh, we will have giving away a bunch of great uh, gaming prizes and stuff like that. And every $25 Canadian that you donate through that link will give you one chance to win a grand prize or one of the other great prizes in that raffle. I'll still have to announce what that those prizes are in the future. I know one of them is going to be a copy of the fantastic Blackbirds RPG because I have an extra copy. Uh, that I accidentally purchased, and we'll kick that in as a prize. Uh, there is also, um, uh, I will say, the, the other thing is, is we will be kicking off, yeah, Blackbirds, which we, we spent uh, our holidays playing, a fucking amazing uh, dark fantasy RPG. Um, there's also a link, um, oh, sorry, not a link. Uh, we also uh, will be having, uh, we're doing something new for our charity uh, sessions uh, this year. We have six charity sessions planned, and all of them will be linked into an on uh, a year-long uh, charity campaign. We will be opening voting for that quite soon, and then we'll be having uh, donors who have donated. Uh, I think I think it's twenty-five dollars is the threshold. Twenty-five dollars or more, you get to vote on some of the components of that adventure, and then these will also be uh, you'll be voting on what changes between all of them for the ongoing games. And uh, we've narrowed it down to about two games right now that I need to sort out this weekend. But there's some pretty. They're pretty excited. I don't. It's self-congratulatory. I wrote them, so it's kind of. I'm very excited for them. We'll see how the proof comes out in the pudding, but they seem pretty fucking cool. And I think there's lots of fun opportunities for donors to be able to help shape what those stories are going to be over the next year. So uh, not only do you get a chance to win some cool gaming stuff, you also get to help shape what's we're playing on the channel, and uh, you get a chance to win some cool gaming stuff, including the amazing uh, chainmail dice bags that uh, Dave made, loved by cats everywhere. <laughs> um, and the uh, let's see here the last thing I will say look at those things those are amazing I got mine in my, my uh, drawer here I clark myself in my shins if I try and open it um, uh, the last thing I will say is an enormous thank you to our stalwart kingmakers so John James Jamie George uh, get over here. Jeff <laughs> it's like a Dr. Seuss game or book yeah exactly and Dave <laughs> Thank you so much for playing today, guys. We've, uh, it, I'm, man, am I glad to, I've been very, very excited to get this campaign up and running. Uh, the characters are all fucking great. This was a terrifically fun session. I can't wait for the next one. So thank you so much, guys, especially to James, who is joining us at yeah. Ridiculous O'Clock in the Netherlands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really, so thank yeah. you. Changing my name, adding a J. Yeah, <laughs> and to <Nice>. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, for those listening at home thank you so much for joining us for our first session we'll be back in two weeks time in the stolen lands and we'll see what other mysteries our heroes can they actually make it to uh, Nive uh i've already forgotten the name of the place Nive Nivatka's, uh crossing <laughs> whatever it is i'll find two weeks to, to bone up on it and until we see you again uh we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and uh find the here the troubles that our heroes are finding in the rossland uh wilderness uh and until we see you again stay safe Stay healthy and happy gaming. See ya. See ya. <laughs>